Yes, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're in tune to the Hidden Science Academy. My name is Leo Marshall. Thank you everyone for being here. There's a lot of people in here already. I know there's a lot of people that are gonna be joining us later. You're in for a very, very jam-packed, information-packed evening on the secret science of CMOS. Now, I've got some very special guests with me today. We've got Leah Salmon, the Naturally You coach. We've got E Kong from Eat to Live, Not to Die. And we've also got two people who are suppliers of CMOS, a brother named Chris and Charles from Ankara.com. And Ankara, if you was at the Black Holistic Health uh, webinar, what was that last Saturday? Ankara or Charles, he owns Ankara, and Ankara is a, a black owned supplement company. And they specialize in moringa and red algae we're going to be talking about algae a lot tonight and some other very powerful products and i'm going to let him talk about that in a bit so charles is going to be up first but before we get into the science of cmos everyone before we start talking about the science of cmos i'm going to go through what we've got coming up so if if this is your first time at a hidden science academy event a hidden science academy webinar let me just show you what we've got coming up yeah so just going to share my screen and tell you what we've got coming up. Let me see. Big up everyone that's in the comments. Big up everyone that is going to be joining us a little bit later. And there is going to be a link for Vimeo as well. So people who haven't signed up, who really want to get in, I'm going to be sharing the link to Vimeo as well. All right. So here's what we got coming up. So for those that don't know, my name is Leon Marshall. I run the Hidden Science Academy with my sister, Vanika Marshall. This is her here. Vanika Marshall was a best-selling author. She's actually got two books on Amazon. This is one of them, Black British History, Black Influences on British Culture. Very, very powerful book. But she's got a second book on Amazon as well. I'll allow her to tell you about that later if she wants to. But two books on Amazon. So she's a best-selling author. And myself and Vinika, we run the Hidden Science Academy. And we put on courses, events, webinars, lectures, you know, teaching the community about things that we think are important for us to know. And if you haven't already, you can follow us on Instagram at the, at the Hidden Science Academy. Some of our previous events, even some of our previous webinars. Yeah. So. A lot of stuff that you guys can check out. Follow us on social media. Me, myself, I'm on Instagram. So if you want to come and follow me, that's at the scientist online. At the scientist online. They call me the scientist because of how well I break down science in a very simplified way. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at the scientist online. Now, here's what we got coming up. We got the people that were at our previous webinar uh, uh, last Saturday where we went through the hidden sites of Black Holistic Health. Now this, throughout this year, is going to be a free monthly webinar where you guys can uh, log in for free and ask the experts questions on health, any questions with regards to health. So we had a really long session last time, but this is monthly. So my sister will be posting the links where you guys can sign up for this. It's literally one link that you use to sign up to all of this. So one link, and you can sign up to all of the events that we've got coming up. It will list all of the, the events and you can just choose which one you wanna sign up to. This is the Hidden Science of Black Holistic Health. The next webinar will be next month. It's gonna be on the 16th of each month. We're gonna be running this for free. And you guys can ask all of your Black Holistic Health questions, anything that you're confused about with regards to health. Every month we're gonna have different um, guests. Um, next month we're gonna have Dr. Mark Walcott, so we're going to have very powerful guests every single time. Yeah, so don't miss out on that. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the secret science of CMOS. People, get your questions ready. I'm going to go through the format in a bit, but make sure you've got your questions. I know loads of people have got questions for tonight. I know for a fact because my Instagram, my WhatsApp was popping this week when people were just asking me questions after questions after questions. I was like, make sure you, you register for this webinar. We're going to be answering all of those questions. So people, get your questions ready. This is our next one. This is on January the 30th, Black Solutions. If you ever wanted to know more about, you know, your rights in this country, in the UK, with regards to law, whatever it is, with regards to, you know, what's going to be happening this year, um, things that are changing, you know what I'm saying, our rights with regards to things that are changing this year, 
with regards to COVID and that sort of stuff. Some people just want to know the law. Some people want to know common law. Some people just have questions with regards to what we as individuals can and can't do. What are they going to stop us from doing? This is Black, Black Solutions. So at this event, we're going to have uh, black lawyers and professionals who can give us the lowdown on things to do with the law. One thing that might help, I, I know a lot of people may have teenage sons. One thing that might help is asking them questions about stop and search. We're going to have some very powerful people who can answer questions with regards to stop and search. That might be good for your children, for the people who have teenagers or um, people who you know that are in their 20s. That might be good. Yeah. So very powerful event, Black Solutions. My sister will post a link to that. And then we've got this next month, Saturday, the 6th of February, the secret science of sicker cell. Now, this is a very powerful one. Here's what I'd like for everyone to do. At this event, we're going to be breaking down the science of sicker cell. Remember, they always tell us that, you know, Black people, we're more likely to get this and there's no cure and this, that and the other. We're going to get to the truth of sicker cell. So every single one of us probably knows someone who suffers from sicker cell. Make sure you share this with everyone you know. This is going to be a going to be a very powerful event. We've got some powerful, powerful panelists on this one. Uh, Samantha Greaves, who's the founder of the Sicker Cell Foundation. We've got Dr. Mark Walcott's going to be on this one. For the people who know who Dr. Mark Walcott is, so there's going to be some very powerful people on this one, yeah. And we've got some black physiotherapists that are going to talk about sickle cell on this one as well. So you don't want to miss out on that. Make sure, even if you're not interested in sickle cell, make sure you're sharing this with your friends and family because chances are they know someone who suffers from sickle cell that they'll definitely benefit from this event. And next month, now for the people who have been following the Hidden Science Academy, you know we do an, this event annually, the Hidden Science of Black Love. We do it annually. We've been doing it for three years now, February, um, each year in February, so when we're going to do it this year as well, but obviously this year it's going to be online, and yeah, for the people who have been to a Black Love event before, one of the Hidden Science Academy's Black Love event before, you know what, what is entailed for this one. So much information, powerful, powerful information, and this time we're doing it online, so who knows, we might even get more special guests this time round. Now, before this event, this is going to be February the 20th, before this event, We've got something, you know, uh, like a teaser before the Hidden Science of Black Love. Hidden Science of Black Love is going to be later on in February. But before that, we've got something very special coming up next month. I can't say too much about it right now. I might just tease you with it. We're going to be putting the spotlight on slow jams. We're going to be talking about the hidden science of slow jams. That is going to be on the 13th of February. I've laid out the bag, people. I've laid out the bag. You can't book onto it right now, but as long as you're in our WhatsApp group or our Telegram, you're following us on Telegram or you're following us on, you know, the socials, you'll, you'll, you'll be notified when we're doing this event. You do not want to miss this event. The hidden sides of slow jams. People saying, I can't wait, can't wait. Trust me, I can't wait. And we've got a bad boy DJ that's going to be flinging down tunes throughout the whole night at this event as well. Trust me, that's going to be amazing. All right, so that's what we got coming up. I did mention the WhatsApp group. So if my sister can post the link to the WhatsApp group and, and the, the Telegram as well. And then, so if you guys want to join the Telegram, you can join the Telegram. You can join our WhatsApp group. I know enough people are jumping off of WhatsApp right now. So you can join the WhatsApp, you can join the Telegram. Just make sure you're following us on, on one of them and you'll be notified when we're doing that event, yeah? Okay, let me tell you how today's gonna go before I introduce my first guest. Every single speaker is gonna speak for 15 to 20 minutes, yeah? They're gonna tell you about CMOS in their own way. They're gonna speak for 15 to 20 minutes. You guys, if you have questions, you can put them in the Q&A section. However, because there's going to be a lot of questions tonight, I'd suggest wait until the person finishes um, what they're talking about. And then, this is what we did at the last webinar. If you raise your hand, there's a way you can raise your hand in the, in the Zoom webinar. If you raise your hand, we will come to you 
and unmute your mic. Well, we will, we will allow you to talk and then you can unmute your mic and then you can ask your question live, yeah? That's the only way. If you put your question in the Q&A section, we'll try and get to them throughout the, the night, but chances are we're gonna miss a lot of them because there's gonna be a lot of questions, yeah? However, if you really want your question answered, you raise your hand after the person speaking uh, has finished speaking. I'll go through them. I'll allow you to talk. You can unmute your mic and then you can ask your question live. The only thing I'd say, if you are gonna ask a question, please try and keep the question short and sweet and only one question. Because last time there was hundreds of questions and we couldn't get through everyone. So one question and try and keep your question short and sweet. And with the people who are answering, if we can try and keep the answers as, you know, sh as short and sweet as well, just so we can get through as many questions as possible. I know everyone's got questions with regards to CMOS. A lot of people, you know, are confused with regards to CMOS. So I'm hoping that we can, you know, um, clear all the clarity or clear all the confusion today and have a lot of clarity with regards to CMOS. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce my first guest, who is Charles from Ankara. So Charles is going to speak 10, 15 minutes about, you know, Ankara and about CMOS. And then afterwards, you guys have a chance to ask him any questions you want, any questions you want for five minutes, and then we'll move on to the next speaker. Yeah. All right. So first special guest, Charles. Yes, greetings. Greetings, greetings my brother. How are you, bro? I'm good. I'm good. And how are you? I can see I'm you're well. healthy and well. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. So we're looking forward to hearing what you got to say. And again, people, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A section. We will try and go through them. But if you really want to get your question answered today, wait until Charles is finished and then raise your hand and we'll get to you. All right. Over to you, brother. Right. Well, first of all, I'd like to um, big up Leon Marshall and Vanika Marshall for formulating the Eden Science Academy because if you're all here and you're interested in your health, this is a place to be, you know? So keep spreading the news about the Hidden Science Academy. Also, I'd like to big up the other talkers and speakers on the panel. Now, my name's Charles and I'm from Ankara. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me for those that don't know me. Um, there was a time you know, when I was going through problems, yeah, I had health issues and I was basically going to the doctor for about a year and a half, being used to what I could see, I was being used as an experiment because I was trying all different sorts of creams and stuff. The first time, yes, it did seem to work, but then after that, it came back with a vengeance and I saw the doctors just giving me different things to try, nothing getting better then they say they're gonna send me to a specialist. And I go to the specialist for about a year and it was almost the same thing, trying different creams until one day I'm called into the specialist and they've told me, oh, Charles, you're just gonna to have to accept that you're, you know, you're gonna have this condition for life. You know, it's a problem with Afro-Caribbean skin, you know? So at that point I was really devastated because I did not know where to go until a friend pointed me to a herbalist and said, why don't you try this guy here? And I was desperate. I went to the herbalist, told the herbalist what my problem was. It was a skin condition and showed him my skin and he wasn't even really looking at me. He just said, that's no problem. Yeah, I can sort that out, no problem. And I'm being used to the way our doctors examine you. And I was thinking, this guy's not even examining me. Like, but, Something said, spirit said, follow what he says. Within two days, I started to see a change. Within a month, I was cured. And not only cured, with the regime that I went through and the detox, and remember that word, with the detox, everything cleared. Mental clarity, everything. And that's when I realized now what I wanted to do. I wanted to be the go-to person when other people are told by the doctors or the so-called specialists that they have a condition and they're gonna be stuck with this condition for life. Because normally we just take what they say and we just start suffering and worrying about whatever the problem is, not realizing that there's a remedy for most everything. So 
I spent a lot of time from 2008 to 2010 researching and traveling, yeah, um, specializing in looking at Moringa, which nobody really knew about at the time. We were the pioneers for Moringa in the UK and started Ankara in 2010. Now, with my passion to help others, okay, I only wanted to supply the highest quality supplements. So the first thing is they've got to be 100% natural. That's the first test. The second test, there cannot be any adverse effects. And the third test, customers have to see visible results. So based on this, we started with a range of products, Moringa, and as time went on, our products grew. And, you know, Dr. Sabi, you know, was somebody that I listened to a lot from around 20 odd years ago. You know, I used to collect his DVDs. You know, Dr. Africa is another person I listened to and met and, you know, worked alongside at certain times. And um, the Irish moss, the sea moss, was something that Dr. Sabi always used to mention, sea moss. CMOS, in, in almost every talk he done, he mentioned CMOS. At this time, I wasn't really 100% aware that he was talking about Irish moss because I grew up on Irish moss. You know, I used to drink Irish moss hot out the pot to go to school, you know? And one thing I noticed that while I was at school growing up that I was very good at sports. Yeah, and everybody knew that, oh, Charles is a very fast runner, you know, and I was very athletic, played a lot of sports and stuff. At that time, I did not know that the CMOS that I was taking was something that helped to build my muscles. It gave me energy. I was not aware of this, okay? But I've been taking CMOS, you can call it, all my life, okay? Now, what you're getting from CMOS is you get magnesium, okay, you get calcium, you get iodine, yeah, you get copper, zinc. As a matter of fact, there's 102 minerals needed for the body to be healthy and functional. And from just CMOS, you'll get 92. So this is how powerful this is. We not only do sea moss, we also do a seaweed called red algae, okay, which I'm going to go into a bit later, as this is mainly about the sea moss. So you've got different varieties of sea moss, okay, and I'm a, I would say I'm a connoisseur for sea moss because I've grown on it, you know, every, almost every day I was drinking sea moss, not realizing mm. what it was doing for me, and up to today, I continue to sell, to drink CMOS, and we sell this CMOS here, which some of you might be familiar with. It's a very high quality CMOS, okay? It's the Ankara CMOS, it's a purple CMOS, which is the highest quality CMOS out there. It's a deep ocean CMOS. This comes out the ocean, okay? Because you have CMOS, which they're even farming it now on seabeds you know, where you don't have to go out very far into the sea to get it. But the real quality comes from deep in the ocean. Okay, so the purple sea moss, for you, for you that's never seen the purple sea moss, this is it here. Yeah, purple sea moss. Okay, it's, it's very, it's, it's rare. It's not something that you'll see every day. You know, the sea moss that you'll see every day, all out from here. Yeah, this is a regular sea moss, okay, which is still good. Okay, it's very regular. Okay, it's a good sea moss, but the purple sea moss is a higher quality sea moss, and I'm going to explain why in a bit. Okay, now, me being a connoisseur, not only is there just purple sea moss, there's this type of purple sea moss here. Okay, now this is a lot darker and it's different. It's more, look, looks more like a flower. Yeah, it's different from the purple sea moss I showed you at first, okay? And it's very powerful. Now, with this sea moss, when you're making it, 
yeah, you can tell the strength of it because you can literally smell the ocean as you're boiling it, if you boil your sea moss, because there's different ways that you can make the sea moss, uh, which I'll go into later, okay? Now, so there are different levels of sea moss and there are different qualities. And I go for Ankara supplies the purple sea moss because the other sea moss, which I showed you with the elastic color, that's available almost everywhere where they sell sea moss. The purple one is not so common. Okay, and it is richer and you can tell by when you're just boiling the purple sea moss or even put it to soak, you can smell the sea, you can smell the ocean. It's that strong. So five minutes, brother, five minutes. It's nutrient dense. For, okay. We've also got the red algae, which is a seaweed, because a lot of um Customers out there might not like the taste of sea moss or what we call Irish moss, okay? We also have it in a gel form, yeah? This is what I've boiled, yeah? And you can see here, it's a gel, yeah? It's quite solid. And you can, once you've boiled your Irish moss and it turns into a gel, you can fridge it. And it stays in the fridge for quite a long time, okay? But for those of you that don't like the taste of Irish moss or so, I recommend you get this, which is the red algae, okay? They both contain iodine. And iodine is very important in these times with what's going on with the five Gs and the radiation because the iodine helps the body to reject radiation. It also helps to take care of the thyroid, okay? So you'll get energy from the purple, purple sea moss, okay? And it's a nutrient that I recommend that we should all be taking because it also helps to build the immune system, which is another key factor with what's going on in the world today. Yeah, with all these lockdowns, you know, it's no point worrying, stay at home and build your immune and exercise when you can, because the Irish moss or the sea moss, it will give you that energy where you want to do something in your exercise. And for all the men listening, okay, it has a libido effect on men for sure. So for the men listening, you should definitely be taking Irish moss or sea moss. And you can find the purple sea moss at www.ankara.com. I did put it in the chat. So if you scroll in the chat, you'll be able to see where you can find our website. Okay, and you can purchase your purple sea moss, which is a very high quality sea moss from there but it is definitely beneficial for your health. And I can tell you that as someone who's been taking CMOS for as long as I can remember, you know? So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more information coming later on, yeah, about the CMOS, you know? And um, I'm here also to answer any questions anyone may wanna ask about the CMOS. As I said, I, like I've been, I've grown up on this, so. I'm very, very much familiar with CMOS. Thank you, brother. We're gonna go straight to the questions, waste no time. So, uh, Pauline, Pauline, you had your hand up. Pauline Williams, can you speak? If you can unmute your mic. Pauline Williams. Pauline. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Greetings. Greetings. Did I have a question? No, I didn't have any questions. Sorry, I must have just raised my hand. No worries. No worries. All right. Going on to the next person, Hugh. Hugh Alwood. Hugh, can you unmute your mic and ask your question? I did. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my hand. My apologies. <laughs> okay. All right. Hopefully, this one has a question. Reese. Reese, can you unmute your mic and ask your question? Reese. No. Okay. Emma, did you have a question? <laughs> Hi guys. Yeah, I actually did have a question. And um, firstly, thank you for putting this on. Secondly, 
um, how much should you take? Should it be based on your weight? Should it be based on like, yeah, how much sumo should you take a day or a week? Good Thanks. question. And we just, Econ's just joined us. So if Econ wants to answer any of these questions, he can jump in as well. So Charles, Thanks. how much should we take? Well, basically, um, depending on the individual, I mean, I take CMOS, you know, at least say three times a week. You know, if I'm doing any training, I definitely take CMOS that morning, okay, because I find it gives energy. You can, it's, it's natural. So you can basically take as much of it as you like. So if you're taking it like twice a day, you, you take it twice a day. It's, it's a food source. So it's also like a food and it's also something very useful when you're fasting. Econ looked like he agreed with that. Take it every day. Yeah, yeah. CMOS, you can't overdose on CMOS. The more you take, the better it is for you. Straight. Straight. All right. Juliana? Juliana, if you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Yeah, I just wondered, um, if you have high blood pressure, is it good to use CMOS? Yes. Yes. Yeah. CMOS, it has no adverse effects on the body. So the only thing you can do is get benefits from CMOS, you know, more benefits and become more healthier as you go along and the more you take it. Yes, indeed. Thanks. All right. Uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Willis, can you unmute your mic and ask your question, please, sis? Hi, hello, everyone. Um, um, I'm thinking about which um, different diseases that it could help to cure. I don't know if you've heard of one called lichen planus, L-I-C-H-E-N-P-L-A-N-U-S, lichen planus. Um, my daughter got it when she was around seven years old. Um, it was very rare at that time. And the doctors at King's College Hospital in Camberwell said, oh, it's, um, it's from Africa. So I'm like, and they said, are you African? I says, well, my descendants are. So yes, I guess I am. And, and then she went on steroids. It bloated her up and it scarred her skin. And, you know, she's still suffering with it now. And she's in her uh, 30s now. Um, I'm on a Facebook group and I've noticed people from every culture ha actually have it. So it was very rare. It was an African thing at first, but now every culture has it. It's a very rare thing. It looks the same on everyone. Has any research been done on lichen planus at all? Well, I don't know about any research on that particular ailment, but what I do know that CMOS is very good for the skin and also yeah. that there are a lot of products now out there using CMOS for face masks yeah. you know, and um, in soaps you know because it's very good for the skin so when you have a skin condition um i would firstly look at the diet yeah what are you eating that consuming that may cause these problems because as i said earlier i got into natural nutrition and health because i went through um a very serious skin issue and i was also told by the doctors and the so-called specialists that this is a problem with Afro-Caribbean skin. Now, mm. I've proved that very much wrong because at that time, I thought I was eating healthy because I would only eat like chicken and fish and regular um, West Indian diet, you know? Yeah. So I thought I was eating healthy at that time. Only to, in, the, in the long run, I learned that it had a lot to do with what I was eating, and this is why I detoxed, okay, for about 30 days and got rid of my issue, and I've never seen it back again. All right, thank you very much. Let's move. Right, thank on. you. We're gonna allow two more people to ask questions, then we're gonna move on to Econ. So, Econ's got a lot to say. So, two more questions. So, Aben Abena, can you unmute your mic and ask your question? Abena. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Hi. Um, I have uh, two questions. Firstly, um, how do you prepare CMOS? And secondly, once it's prepared, uh, how do you store it? And how right. long? Great questions. Great, great questions. But Leah's going to cover that. 
Leah's actually going to show you. She's actually okay. going to show you. So Leah's up, up after Ekong. So, so that's definitely going to be covered. Uh, so thank you, sis. Let's okay, move on. You. Last person before. All right. Let's see if we can squeeze in two more. Sandra, can you unmute your mic? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yes. My question was, what is the best way? Is it better to soak it and just blend it and consume it that way? Or is it better to boil it for a few minutes? Or is it best to boil it for an hour? Because I know back in the day, our elders would boil it for about an hour because they used to say, you've got to boil out stuff and whatnot. So just wanted to know what you thought. Okay. Um, well, as I said, growing up, I used to drink um, Irish moss pot out the pot like a tea. It was just like a thick, gluey kind of tea. But as getting more into what how to get the best out of it, you know, they say if you boil it too much, you could be boiling out the minerals and the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So some people just soak it, yeah, and blend it up once it's soaked. Some people do boil it and you know get it to set until it becomes um a gel form like the one i've showed here okay yeah so, you know so it's um you know it's what way you prefer you know maybe you just try both ways and see which way works best for you but yeah i've tried i've tried both ways but i find that it's better when i just as it comes to the boil is when i switch it off and i leave it and i find that way but i just wanted to know if i was actually boiling out the nutrients because everyone says different things. Okay. Well, um, also... Leah, Leah's going to cover that. Don't worry. Leah, Leah's going to cover that. She's actually going to show how she makes hers. So okay, will definitely be answered. All right. Okay. One, Thank you. Thank you, sis. One last one before we move on to Ekong. Sade, don't know if I'm saying your name right. Sade, if you want to unmute your mic and ask your question. You are saying my name correctly. Um, good evening. Um, this question is addressed to Charles. Uh, I think you've kind of touched on it Just because you said you grew up on the sea moss and you had it almost daily. Yeah. And then later on in life, you had the skin issue, the serious um, skin um, issues you refer wow. to. Just curious, given that you were on a diet of sea moss from childhood, how was that possible given all the benefits of the sea moss? That was because of the um the bun and cheese that i used to crave the chicken okay um the fish it was my diet that was wrong okay so this the sea moss wasn't enough yeah to rectify because you can't be eating rubbish and then be taking something good and expecting to be getting the health benefits because it's like you're going around in a circle you, you're putting rubbish into your body and then you're putting something healthy on top of the rubbish, which is why it was important to detox, to get the rubbish out of the system and then start putting in the good food, you know? So there was no detox there. Yeah, and I was just eating what I thought was a healthy diet, dairy stuff, you know, um, meat, you, you know, like I was mainly on chicken and fish every now and then I might have a bit of oxtail, you know, or what something like that. But, it was a bad diet. Yeah. So the, the sea moss wasn't enough with exactly. the bad diet. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. We've got loads of questions and we're going to try and get through to everyone. So we're going to move on now to our next special guest. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank uh, you. Charles is going to stick around. So he'll be part of the panel. So if you have any specific questions for Charles later on, please do raise your hand and ask your questions to Charles. But for now, thank you, Charles. We'll speak to you in a bit. Yeah. All right. Stepping up, stepping inside, we have Ekong from Eat to Live, Not to Die. Greetings, brother. Greetings, brother. How's things? How, how are you, bro? I'm very well, thank you, bro. Good, good, good. For the people who were at the, the Blacklisted Health webinar, you know that Ekong tore down the place. Like, everyone was asking about Ekong after this one. So if you haven't heard of this brother, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself very quickly and tell you what he does, but very powerful brother. He's the one that wrote the book, Eat to Live, Not to Die. You may not be familiar with it, but as soon as you see it, you'll be like, oh, I've seen that before. That book right there, this is the author. This is the brother who wrote that book, Eat to Live, Not to Die. Very powerful brother. I think he'll tell us, but I think he he actually went to Honduras at the time when Dr. Sebi was alive. So he's got some very powerful info. 
So you guys get ready. Ekong, it's all yours, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, first of all, thank you to yourself, your sister, and all the panelists, and everybody that's tuned in to lend me their ears, so to speak. Brothers and sisters, my name is Ekong. I run the charity called Eat to Live Not to Die. I've been to see Dr. Sebi in 2015, went to Usha Village. You can watch that at ETLNTD. That's the name of my YouTube channel. If you want to see my trip to Honduras in 2015. To me, it was an honor to meet him. But don't think because uh, just because he's gone to see Dr. Sebi, he thinks he knows everything. I don't know everything. I only know the little, I only know a little and the little that I know I share. It's as simple as that. So first of all, I just want to talk about briefly and preparing CMOS. What I do personally, I just soak it for two hours. Once it's been soaked for two hours, I pour water over it three times and rinse it three times. And then after that, I place the CMOS into the blender with warm water and then I blend it. The more water you use, the more watery it will be. The less water you use, the less water, water, watery it will be and it will become, become more thick like a gel. Now, I bet you any money, if you blend that sea moss with cold water, it will not come out as smooth as if you blended it with warm water, okay? It just, it's just better to blend it with warm water. Now, moving on, I wanna um, uh, read something to you. I don't, can I flip my screen? Let me see. Yeah, here it is. I wanna read something to you very quickly. It's very important. I wrote this myself. Sea moss is a seaweed, also known as Irish moss or Chondrus crypsis. Um, it, it offers 92 of the 102 minerals of which the body is made. Use it for your bones, brain, muscles, thyroid, glands, bad breath, pulmonary and respiration illnesses, coughs, dysentery, natural diuretic, calms the appetite and dissolves fat. You can also use it to regulate the bowels, or ulcers, skin, kidneys, heart and obesity. CMOS is so powerful that it can bind radioactivity. So you could say that CMOS is nature's version of chemotherapy. It contains important minerals such as potassium iodide, um, normal um, everyday potassium, phosphate, bromides, and large percentages of zinc and magnesium, and also in abundance, calcium. It's the number one plant on this earth when we're trying to address the bones. Never forget that. If you have any kind of bone problems, it is safe to say that CMOS is your remedy, okay? CMOS has many minerals, but the most abundant mineral, as I said before, is calcium. You can mix CMOS with bladderwrack, which is just another type of CMOS, and it makes it a great combination together. Drink as much as you like every day, and try to use dates or 100% um, agave syrup to sweeten the taste, okay? Now, even though CMOS strengthens the body and the muscles, it doesn't fire it up with energy. Iron is the spark plug of the human body and it is the only mineral on the planet that is magnetic. Being that the iron is magnetic, it has a tendency to pull other minerals to it. So when you are taking iron, you are taking all minerals at a proportionate balance. Remember, iron is expressed on two levels, as a rock and as a plant. Thank you for listening to that. So some other good facts about sea moss. Sea moss comes from the sea and it's not a coincidence. Listen to this, sea moss, sea men. Sea moss, sea men, very good for this. Very good for the semen of the man, very good for the, for the fluids of the woman also. And it has that semen texture, doesn't it? Very slimy, very slippery. It's not a coincidence. Don't let that go over your head. Now, sea moss was, is created by Mother Nature. I didn't make sea moss. So it comes from the primordial waters. And we all know what that is. The primordial waters is basically what um, many, many, many scientists agree that filled the entire universe. So we all came from water. So it makes sense to consume something that contains 92 minerals and you find it in the ocean. Another fact, you can use sea moss to actually grow your hair. When you make the gel, place it in your hair, wrap your hair with something that won't allow oxygen to be released and allow the sea moss to go into the pores. The biggest pores on your body, my brothers and sisters, is on your head. So allow that sea moss to go into your brain. 
hit your pineal gland, hit your cerebral cortex, go to the different areas of the body where it needs to do its work. Because at the end of the day, once you consume sea moss, once you consume anything, chicken and chips, sea moss, Harry Bowls, once you swallow it, game over, the body does what it does. There's nothing you can do. You have no control. That's the, that's the fundamental piece of, so it's, su it's subtle information. It's so normal to say, but once you swallow something, your body's going to do what it's going to do even a million years ago. Human beings a million years ago, what, they, what was going on in their body when they drank sea moss is the same thing that's going to happen in our bodies when we drink sea moss, because it's going to address the entire system, the endocrine system. The endocrine system is every single gland that produces hormones in your body when you want to have sex, when you come up with the idea, when you, every gland, your pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, your adrenal glands, your mammary glands, your breasts, your, um, your penis has a gland there. Every gland, brothers and sisters, CMOS is going to address that because it's filled with iodine. Iodine comes from the ocean. Do you understand? Bromides come from the ocean. Carbonates come from land. And uh, phosphates also come from land. Those are the four elements we need. Phosphates, uh, um, carbonates, iodides, and bromides. Very important. Now, CMOS lasts indefinitely. Some people say, when does CMOS expire? Well, there's no expiry date on your CMOS, brother. CMOS lasts indefinitely. If you keep it in a dry area, locked tight, sealed, no oxygen going in it, you can use it in year 2075. Very simple. Um, children can drink CMOS. If you can't breastfeed for whatever reason, please give your children CMOS. It's safe. It's fine. The NHS calls it carrageen. They're trying to you know, you know these people, man. They take our stuff, isolate stuff, and do this, do that, and give it to us in drips and drabs. CMOS is safe, all right, for your children. You can also mix the CMOS if you want with hemp milk. Very good combination. Um, also, if the woman is finding it hard to um, for lactation, she can drink CMOS, and then she'll also develop that breast milk, and then be, and hopefully it will start producing the milk. For the child and the best way to even give a child CMOS in my honest opinion is for the mother to drink the CMOS first and just breastfeed the child because whatever the mother is drinking and eating that's what the child is going to be drinking and eating also what the the mother is listening to smelling taste everything's going to the child okay um what else now let me try and keep on track also what I wanted to say about um, CMOS, CMOS isn't the only sea vegetable. Remember that. There's also bladderwrack, as I said before. There's also wakami, dulse, kelp. There's also um, arami and hijaki and nori. These are all sea vegetables, very, very high in iodine. And remember what I said, anyone out there that's looking to do chemotherapy or know someone that wants to do chemotherapy, tell them to go on an indefinite CMOS and iron um, fast. Drink CMOS and iron every day. You know what it's going to do to you? It's going to melt your fibroid. It's going to melt your cancer. It's going to melt the, the, the lump in your breast. It's going to melt these things. You don't cut out anything. You don't. You drink things that deacidify the blood. It's as simple as that. African, African science is very simple. We don't complex things and deal with that complexity that we created. It's very simple. We just have to know. Once you know now, you know forever. Do you understand? But it's just about implementing it. A man can get gain, gain knowledge all over the, the world and not be able to implement the knowledge. So it's, it's very important for you to practice these things that we're telling you, okay? And also, CMOS can be used on your face. Any skin conditions that anybody may have, put the CMOS on your skin if you're in a hot country, put CMOS all over your body and go and sunbathe. Thank me later. Do you understand? It's very, very serious. CMOS is, is, is so incredible. We, under, we undermine it. We don't understand that. It's, it's something that we use for millions of years how long has black people been on the planet earth for no forget even the planet earth how long have we existed nobody knows over a million years over that so 
we used to use these things. We used to know these things, but naturally we have forgotten. And all we're trying to do is remember the DNA remembers it all. So we just have to be pushed. We just have to be taught. You know, we have to be encouraged and then we'll get back on track. It's as easy as that. So now one more thing now, what does real CMOS look like and where can you get it? Number one, you can get it from eat to live, not to die.com. That's my website. And I'm also going to show you um, what my CMOS looks like right now. Let me flip my camera. This is my CMOS. Can you see that? This is what my CMOS looks like. Comes from Saint Lucia. All right, it's not it's not the deepest or the best CMOS in the world. It's just good CMOS, brothers and sisters. I don't know who has the best CMOS. Everyone's CMOS has to get tested, and then we'll be able to know. But I just I just know this is good CMOS, and people are getting very good results from this CMOS here, brothers and sisters. So you can get my CMOS from eat to live not to die dot com. I'm gonna put the website in the comments. I'm also gonna um, put my YouTube channel in the comments. It's just ETLNTD, very easy to know. And wow, this is the first time I actually finished on time. Wicked, <laughs> wicked brother, wicked, yeah, wicked, bro. wicked. There were so many questions. A lot of people asking about your, um, your YouTube channel. So if you can post it, I think I posted it, but you'll have to post it again. Um, and where they can get your book, yeah? And someone saying it's sold out. I don't know what they're talking about. All right. Show your appreciation for Ecom. Let's go straight into the questions. There's so many questions. All right. Show your appreciation for Ecom. Big up. People putting ones in the chat. Let's go to the questions. We don't want to waste no time. So I'm going, remember, for the people who have just, yeah, big up all the people putting the ones in the, in the chat. Show your appreciation. Now, for the people who have just joined us, because I know a lot of people have joined us, they never, they wasn't here from the beginning. This is how today's gonna go. Each presenter, each speaker is gonna speak for like 15 minutes, and then we're gonna open the floor up to you guys to ask questions. Now you can use the Q&A section. However, there's gonna be a lot of questions in that Q&A section. We're probably not gonna be able to get to all of them. So what we want you guys to do is call up live. So. In, in this Zoom webinar, if you raise your hand, I can allow you to speak and then you can ask your question live, yeah? We had Charles from Ankara earlier. We now have Econ. Econ's ready to answer any questions you have. And I like how he, uh, I like how he started it. He said, even though I've met Dr. Sebi, yeah? I went to Honduras, I met Dr. Sebi. He's saying, I don't know everything. Even though I met the master teacher, which is Dr. Sebi, I'm not going to turn around and say, I, don't, I know everything. So if, it, if, he, if any of you ask a question, and this goes for everyone on the panel, if any of you ask a question and we don't know, the answer will be, I don't know, yeah? And then it's up to us to do the research, including the person who asked the question. However, I do believe that we'll be able to get everyone's questions answered today. So let's get into the questions. Again, if you raise your hand, we'll get to you. And I can see quite a few. First up, Dan. Dan Stones. Can you unmute your mic and ask your question, Dan Stones? Hi. Um, good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Good evening, Dan. Good evening, brother. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, good evening, kings and queens. Um, basically, um, I have a relative that has thyroids. And as they were, as uh, I also make my own CMOS as well. And... Um, I was told that people with thyroids usually tend to have problems um, kind of digesting it. Like, basically, it's like um, they get allergic to it. Or have you heard anything in regard to that? If that makes sense? Yeah, <clears throat> basically, there's a chemical imbalance. Anything that you can't absorb. Everybody's heard of people that can't drink water. When they drink water in another country, they throw up. It's either a chemical imbalance or your body's not used to getting something natural. So before your body is going to get used to that, you need to continue using it, just like the muscles. If you go exercise one day, it's going to hurt. Two days, it's going to hurt. Three days, it's going to hurt. After four or five days, it's easier. So it's just the same with the inside of the body, as above, so below. Yes, indeed. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you. We'll appreciate it. Cool, take time, gentlemen. Yeah? Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's move on to Yinka. Yinka, can you... Unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello, good evening. 
Uh, I so we talk about purple sea moss being more nutrient rich and um, sort of you know a better version of sea moss. Do we have any more details on that? Do we know exactly what the difference is between purple sea moss and the regular golden sea moss? Okay. Um... When you're, when you're um, boiling or soaking the sea moss, yeah, it, as you can smell, because in certain herbs and things, you can literally smell the strength of it, okay? Yeah. Uh, when you're soaking the purple sea moss, yeah, or boiling it, you can smell the ocean. That's true. Yeah, when you're, when you're doing the, the sea moss, which looks like this one here, you know, yeah. as I did say in the beginning, it's still good. Yeah, but you don't smell the ocean smell that strong, okay? And because and I've noticed an, a difference in my energy between the two, you know. Okay. But all all sea moss is good. The um, you know, the difference isn't, you know, a, a mile apart. But um, as Ankara likes to go for top quality products, so that's why we only supply the um purple sea moss. Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Sister Mut, can you unmute your mic and ask your question, sis? Greetings. <laughs> greetings. Um, greetings. Um, so I just wanted to find mm -hmm. out about the gel. Once you make it into a gel, um, you did say um, that you can store it, but how long can you, can you store it for once it's made into a gel? And would it be in the fridge then? Because obviously it's in the, water. In, so. in, the, in the freezer, indefinitely. In the fridge, three weeks. Three weeks. Great. Thank Thanks. you. All right. Greeting. Uh, Sorry, this is Mabina. I missed oh, it. Oh, Mabina. Okay. Is it okay to ask a question now? Yes, indeed. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so the question, I have a, a couple. Um, one of them is, I've read um, on various uh, websites that um, too much um, too <laughs> much is not good for you and i know obviously these are mo mainly european people who would share that information so i just wanted to ask the question. where that information comes from and if there's any validity in it and the second one is where can i access uh, a written version of all of the 92 minerals does does it exist that particular list <laughs> uh yes i have a list of the 92 minerals and that's going to be coming out in my next book and also, um, no, there's no validity in that statement. You can take as much sea moss as you like. You can, you can eat as much seeded grapes as you like. You can eat as much Julie mangoes as you like. You can eat as much soursops as you like. Mother Nature, how we work as human beings, we eat until we are suffice. We would not naturally eat to a point where we're not satisfied. We would just eat until satisfied. You will drink sea moss until satisfied. Okay. That's All awesome. right. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you, sis. Pat Patricia, can you unmute your mic and ask your question, sis? Patricia. Patricia Brown. Well, well, my question, my, I got my questions answered in the end. Okay, no worries. Uh, we'll but what it. I'm saying, you know, we do, when you, if, one of the questions was the, um, when you freeze it, the gel, when you've made it, yeah. do you defrost it? How do you defrost it? Basically, when you're putting it in as a, because what I do, I put it into ice trays, okay? Like I'm making ice cubes. And when I'm making my smoothie, or if I'm, if I'm, even if I'm putting it in water and I just want it with water, I put warm water in the blender, pop two of them bad boys into the blender and blend, ready to go. Yeah. And do you, do, you, do you usually drink it down with, with milk? No, I just drink it straight like that. If I want to sweeten it, I either add dates or agave syrup. And, and you know people who's got problems with... Just one question, please, because we've got uh, a lot of people Yeah, to get. just one more. You know, um, you know if you've got a problem with lupus? Yes. Does that... Is that... Seem Very good. Very good for lupus. But with lupus, with people that are suffering from lupus... Once you're, when you're healing yourself, stay away from everything sweet, organic or inorganic. Just stay away from everything sweet. Okay. 
Yeah. Thank you, sis. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's move on. Let's try and get in two, two more. So, Eve, if you can unmute your mic and ask your question, please. Eve. Um, hi, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for allowing me to ask my question. Um, I just wanted to ask, and you might have answered this before, but I joined a little bit later. Um, how do you judge the quality of sea moss? Because there's stuff that comes with like barnacles all over it. All right. Sometimes let me show you. Let, let me just show you a picture right now of um, fake sea moss. Then right now, and I told, and I show. I already showed people my sea moss, but I haven't shown everybody a picture of fake sea moss. Here's a picture of fake sea moss. It's very salty. It looks like Haribo. It looks like sherbet. It looks like gelatin. Yeah. Oh, do you understand? Well, I'm actually, I'm actually going to show that because that was, um, that was one of the flyers. We actually made two flyers for this event, yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I can show you one of the flyers that we made. For, actually, it's right here. Let me just show you this. I'm just going to share my screen. Can everyone see that? Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, like Ekong said. It looks like sherbet. There's a lot of like salt on it, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's very thick. This is yep. the this is the fake sea moss, people. Yeah, when you get it and you shake it, and a lot of salt comes off of it, that's the fake one. You know why it's fake? Because it it was probably grown in a pool. Mm -hmm. It was probably grown in a pool, and to to you know to keep it growing. They, they create the waves in the pool because the, the sea moss has to grow with in moving water, yeah? And then just to preserve it, they have to, you know, put salt all over it. The same way you preserve food by putting salt all over it, they preserve it by putting salt all over it. So that yeah. was the fake one, yeah? Yeah. yeah. They, they also are farming um, sea moss, as I mentioned earlier, in the shallow, very, very shallow waters. Nowadays, you know, they are farming it there. So, because they don't want to go out into the deep. So mm -hmm. there is good sea moss and bad sea moss out on the market for sure. Yes, yeah. indeed. But for the people who ask what's the real and fake, you'll know it's fake when it looks, it kind of looks like sweet. Like it's got a lot of salt on it. When you take it and you shake it and a lot of salt comes off of it, that is the fake sea moss. They're trying to preserve it with the salt because it wasn't grown in the sea. There's Ekong showing it again, look at that. Fake sea moss. That is fake sea moss, people, yeah? That is fake sea moss. All right, couple more questions. This one, can you unmute your mic and ask your question, please? Hi, everyone, can you hear hiya. me? Yes. Yeah, hi, um, I have a question. So, uh, sea moss apparently has radiation in it. Um, according to the Fukushima disaster. So I was wondering like how much radiation is actually in CMOS and during the time where uh, Dr. Serbi was promoting it, that disaster didn't happen. So does it have an effect now on like how much we should consume? Should we be more like cautious regarding it or does that's it not a, affect it? That's a very, that's a very, very good question. But well, we have to understand that the sea moss cleans itself, in, in, and I say that in this way, this, the, the ocean will send all things that are unnatural towards the west. And, mm. and the, the, the best things or the best herbs or the best sea vegetables you're gonna find in more the east side. Now, the deeper you go into the ocean as well, the less, those radiations will be able to affect those plants because of how deep the ocean is. And like the brother said before, deep sea sea moss is the best because it's hard for that to affect it because most of that radiation is floating on the surface of the ocean. It's not right. dropping into the ocean and contaminating the deep at all. Right, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, let's move on to... Diane Taylor, Diane, if you can unmute your mic, we're gonna get try and squeeze in two more before we move on. Okay, Diane? no, um, it's well, I don't know if it's actually been answered, but uh, thank you, it's a wonderful platform. Thank you guys for being on here. Um, my brother was taking a lot of sea moss, and he developed um, 
an enlarged thyroid gland. I mean, it's visible. So you had to stop taking it um, because I'm always concerned when people say you can take as much as as much as you want. But is there any prescribed upper limit for this? Because I think we have to be careful because not everyone everyone's constitution is a bit different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can I can I answer that one, please? Yeah. Uh, sister, every human being on this planet, even twins, have different diets. So no one can really say what what happened to someone else. Could be happen to could happen to another unless we all have our daily intake of food in front of us when we're speaking. I don't know what he was eating for his thyroid gland to be in that size. You say CMOS, but also I might ask you a question like, what was his breakfast? What was his lunch? What was his dinner? What did he drink other than CMOS? What environment is he in? You know, do you understand? Like, so these are also fundamental and important questions also because a lot of people like i said before when you have a chemical imbalance just like everybody that understands science you can't absorb calcium if you don't have magnesium coming with that mm. and that will hurt you if you absorb calcium and no magnesium is there as well it will, yeah. it will harden in your kidney in your kidneys you have mm. kidney stones so the body there's a science to it once you're lacking one all others will also lack when your kidney's not working your pancreas will, will have issues. Your adrenal glands will have issues. So we can't really just say, yeah, my brother had this and this happened. What was his diet? What was his lifestyle? What was he eating, drinking, smoking? These are questions we also must ask. And brother, you touched on it. I think Charles touched on it as well. CMOS is not the only seaweed. So yes, we all know that CMOS is good. It's high in iodine, yeah? And mm -hmm. iodine is good for your thyroid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, if you believe that it's CMOS that is um, causing the, the overactive thyroid, getting causing the thyroid to swell, then maybe try another seaweed. Maybe try another one because there mm -hmm. are other ones out there. There is, like the brothers have said, there's CMOS, bladderwrack, dulse, kelp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe try another one. But I do agree, um, especially when it's something natural when we have some type of reaction to it, we think that the problem is the thing. So for example, if someone has a, a, a reaction to a fruit, all of a sudden they think the fruit is poisonous. Like, oh my gosh, I'm allergic to fruits. What's wrong with fruits? No, there's <laughs> something wrong with you. There's something internally it's where true. your body can't take the fruit. Yeah? That's it, that's it. All right, let's and also add quickly there, Leon. As I yes, explained, sir. and someone asked me a very good question earlier, how comes I was taking Irish moss daily and had skin issues, and it was the diet. Yeah, it wasn't the Irish moss giving me or the or the sea moss giving me the skin issues. It was the bad diet surrounding it. So, yes, as Econ said, we really do have to look into what else are we consuming, and yes, what we want to we want to drink sea moss and eat lamb chops and chicken and chips, and then drink CMOS as well. That's not gonna work. Right. All right, one more question, and then we're gonna move on to Leah Salmon. So Shireen, Shireen, can you mute your mic, sis, and ask your question? Hello, good evening, brothers. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, so what I wanted to ask is, I've been diagnosed now for oh, good, nearly 20 years with mixed connective tissue disease. So include, that includes lupus, scleroderma, Sjögren syndrome, Raynaud's, um, a whole host of kind of autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so um, they had me on some um, immune suppressants, which I myself have been kind of coming off and getting eating more fruits and veg and things, but... Um, I just wanted to kind of find out, for me Sis using the CMOS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I heard you say something to someone about, she said about lupus and you said stay away from anything sweet. Yeah. Yeah, so I, so in using CMOS, I'd have to detox first. Is that? Yeah, um, what you sound, you sound like you need a consultation to be honest, but, um, <laughs> But I can say this, I can say that CMOS will help, but CMOS is not the only thing. 
pe- a lot of people mm. think you take CMOS and you're cured. Nah, CMOS yeah. is something that you take in, in conjunction with other things. Do you understand yeah. me? Yeah. So it's not just CMOS that's going to heal you of all diseases forever and you'll be all right. I need to ask yeah. you what your diet is. Again, what do you eat in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night? You know, what's your environment like? Are you under stress? Like, I need to ask you so many questions for me to mm-hmm. be able to, you know, see how I can solve the problem. So okay. if you don't mind, shoot us an email at eat to live not to die at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram. I put I'm gonna put my um the link inside of the chat. So check it okay. out. Okay. Yeah? All right, Thank you, all right. Thank you. All right. Now before I go on to introduce Leah, I just want to say that was a good point with regards to CMOS. We are talking about CMOS today, but it's not the cure all. When you're looking at health, you've got to look at it holistically. You've got to be doing quite a few things throughout the day to understand that, you know, health is not just one thing. And the reason why I say that, I talk about the sun a lot. For the people that have been following me, the Hidden Science Academy, um, anytime I'm talking about our health with black people, I talk about the sun a lot. And people say, oh, you're talking about the sun because I'm like, we need the sun, we need the sun. The sun's um, great for our health. And then people will always say, well, what about those people in Jamaica that, that have type 2 diabetes? What about those people in Africa who are sick? And like we keep on saying, it's it's not just the sun. If you're getting the sun, but you're eating a bad diet, then you're going to be mash up. So it's got to start looking at health holistically. And definitely CMOS is going to be part of that. Stay tuned for my lecture. I'm going to be right at the end. I'm going to be explaining. I heard a couple of people talk about breast milk. I'm going to be talking about how CMOS is very powerful and helps with breast milk. Some people were talking about skin issues, skin conditions and joint conditions. I'm gonna be talking about that and showing you the science behind it. That's a little bit later. But for now, we're going to introduce the Naturally You coach, Leah Salmon. Very powerful sis, doing very powerful stuff in the community. And when it comes on to health, the health of black women, I don't think there's anyone better in our community. So this is Leah Salmon and She's going to actually give you a demonstration of how she makes her CMOS and things you can do with the CMOS gel as well. So, Leah, over to you. Greetings, family. Thank you for joining us today. Greetings in the chat. I can see you. Um, It was lovely listening to Charles and Ekron. Well done. Thank you, brothers, for being in the community. Um, I remember Charles telling me in depth about exactly how to use Moringa seeds. And I even told the um, family at the Hidden Science Academy as well. Um, and of course, the great work that the brother Econ is doing by promoting and sharing um, our late great Dr. Sebi's work. So I'm going to share my screen now. Greetings, family in the chat. I can see you there. So I'm going to share my screen now um, so that I can go through the presentation. Leon, could you shout me when I've got five minutes left, please? Because you know I can chat. And <laughs> <laughs> Will do, will do, sis. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So today, family, I'm going to be sharing um the oh, sorry, i'm going to be sharing seven or well, eight ways that you can use um cmos in your life because obviously we all know the benefits of cmos but we want to oh, we want to um use that in our lives now so that's what we're going to talk about right so um okay seven ways to use cmos gel i think it's actually eight but yeah, seven, eight ways to use CMOS gel. So a bit about me, my name is Leah Sam, and actually you coach. I'm a homeschooling mother of six children, one angel boy, best-selling author of um, six books, one of which is Leah's Raw Food Feast. And I'll be speaking a bit about this later on. Um, I'm a speaker, nutritionist, and life coach. I also am a live blood analyst. You can see me in front of my uh, microscope in that screen. I call her Bast, like the Egyptian goddess, because she's powerful and beautiful. Um, my focus is on black women's health, especially menstrual, womb, and pregnancy health, premature birth prevention, and personal development. I'm on a mission to help my sisters to eat for health, think for happiness, and live in harmony, or what I call becoming naturally you. And you can find out more about my work at thenaturallyyoucoach.com. So we're going to jump straight into it. Seven ways to use CMOS. Family, feel free to take pictures of the screen of my um, slides so you can get the information because some of the slides are a bit text heavy. Um, but I'm going to be reading through them and showing you some of the things. So the brothers have already shown you some things, so I'm going to show you some things as well and talk a bit more um, 
about them. So firstly, how to, I'm not going to go into all the benefits of CMOS gel because we've already, I know that's definitely been covered and I know Leon's going to go into it in a lot more detail. Um, towards the end, I am going to be sharing my clinical experience with my clients who I recommend CMOS gel to um, as well. But this is just a quick um, explanation. Now this, I actually, I sell CMOS and I sell CMOS gel and these, this is the um, information that I send to clients as well as some recipes anytime they buy CMOS gel. So basically the way that I make CMOS gel is to soak the dry moss in plenty of water for four to 24 hours, then rinse it three to four times like Econ was saying. Now, when I soak 50 grams, I normally sell my, my CMOS in 50 gram packets. You should end up with about two and a half, sometimes three cups of the actual wet moss um, now again this is a naturally occurring product so when you soak one batch of gel uh, of the dry moss you might end up with three cups and then you soak another and you might end up with two because it's just naturally occurring it depends on that particular batch that particular harvest of um sea moss but you should end up with roughly two and a half cups of the wet sea moss then you would put that in a pan with about a cup more of water um, I put in, I actually use the cooking method, the tradition, the more traditional cooking method that we know a lot of our parents used to do, um, which I'm assuming um, our brother Charles was talking about him eating it off the stove. Um, so I put it in boiling water, a, a cup more than the, the consistent, the, the amount you've got soaked. And then I simmer mine on a medium heat for 10 minutes. It actually normally ends up being about kind of six to eight minutes but basically until it's all broken down. Now, some people are concerned that the, the simmering and boiling process is going to eliminate a lot of the nutrients that are found in it. But please bear in mind that a lot of the nutrients that are found in sea moss are minerals, and most minerals are not heat sensitive. There are a lot of vitamins that are heat sensitive. So the water-based vitamins like vitamin C, those are water sensitive. They're, they're water-based um, vitamins, miner, uh, you know, nutrients. Um, but minerals can withstand a lot more heat. Um, so you're not going to, you're definitely not going to lose all the nutrients from this process. I personally find that preparing it in this way creates more consistency with the end product. You get a nice smooth gel. Um, I have made it in the way where you just soak it or soak it overnight and then you boil it with warm water. To be honest, that warm water that you, that a lot of people blend it in, um, sometimes that's actually enough to, to create that consistency with the, the gel, the end product, because I find the smoother that that product is, the gel is, the more versatile it is, the easier it's going to be for you to use it in different ways. Um, so yeah, after it has simmered, then I let it cool down um, in the pan or I put it into a glass bowl and I let it cool down. Once it's cooled, then you can put it, now once it's cooled, in fact, you can just put it in the fridge at this point, but you can store, you can blend it again, just to get a smoother consistency. Um, and then when you've got that cooled, some, uh, blended gel then you can put that in the fridge now do please i beg on a dog put boiling hot moss in a, your blender and then your blender mash up <laughs> and then you come look for me make sure you cool down the moss before you put it in your blender because i hope it will mash up otherwise um so then you, i would recommend that you store it in a glass jar or a bpa free plastic container bpa free is one of the harmful chemicals that's found in plastic um, packaging products. If you can get the BPA free containers, then that's a lot better to store your things in. Um, and then that you'll have a nice thick gel from that. That should produce about 28 spoons of sea moss gel. And I recommend people start with one to two spoons a day. Um, and then you can build up if you want to. And as the brothers are saying, a lot of people say that you just can't overdose on it. I am more inclined to get people to begin to know themselves with this because when you're looking at um when people say that the only thing they've added is x and then they've had lots of challenges it is a good idea to look at x and see okay could i be over consuming x in some way or could x be reacting with something else not to say that if you're eating trash um you shouldn't address that but it is it has been found that um people who do have thyroid challenges and um, are taking medication. Now, this is the thing for the, the, the brother that asked the question before. The reason why your relative who had the thyroid challenges, or, or for someone who asked it before, when you have thyroid challenges, you're sometimes given a medication that's got iodine in it. 
So when you're taking the synthetic iodine and then you're taking large amounts of the natural iodine, that can cause a reaction and it can trigger things like hyperthyroidism. You've got Hashimoto's disease uh, or other autoimmune disease challenges, then um, you just need to be mindful of yourself. You just need to get to know how your body reacts to certain things. Now, some people are literally taking about six tablespoons a day and they're having no consequence. So if you start with one to two tablespoons a day and then ramp it up and see how it goes. I know I've blatantly had like half a cup of sea moss gel on some days and I have had no adverse effects from it. So once you've got that gel, then you can, it says um, at the bottom, you can put this gel into your tea, smoothie, porridge, puddings, ice creams, cheese plates, juice, um, soups, and to add a ton of nutrients. So, um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on the, the seven different ways now. So the first way and the way that I um, normally recommend it to my clients is to blend it into smoothies. This, this helps if you don't like slimy consistencies of the actual gel. Um, and if you're already having smoothies, then this is a good way to include the CMOS gel. If you're working with children as well, if you're feeding children, that you are concerned they, they may not like the taste or the consistency of CMOS gel, then putting it into a smoothie with, you know, fruits that taste good, then you'll be completely masking the taste and the consistency. I will also say, I personally don't think a good quality CMOS, if you've got old CMOS gel, if you've got some old badly looked after sea moss and you cook it and it's like i was on the phone to my client the other day and she was saying her mum was cooking sea moss and it stank the whole place out from there you know say you must dump it in the bin put it in the bin <laughs> don't try and salvage it it shouldn't stink up your whole house it does have a slight smell of the sea fair enough but it should not stink out your whole house that's when you know it's not good so when you do have a good quality sea moss and you kept it um, you've stored it appropriately as well. So again, as far as storing is concerned, I would recommend, and the way that I've found um, works, is similar to what the brothers are saying, when you've got the gel, it lasts in the fridge for about two weeks, I would say, before I've noticed changes happening with it. Um, and then in the freezer, um, three months. Because I sell the gel, it's like the commercial, what I meant to say commercially, for safety reasons, for the members of the public buying the gel. Um, I would recommend that you, you use it within about three months. Now, you shouldn't really, unless you're buying enough in bulk, you should be able to get through your gel. So it shouldn't have to sit in your freezer for, for much longer than three months. Um, so blending it into smoothies is one way. The other thing you can do is get that gel and combine it into desserts. So creams. So the picture that I have there is of a raw vegan um, apple crumble, which you could, the recipe you can find in my book, Live Raw Food Feast, from my website, thenaturallyyoucoach.com. So that's um, apples, raw apples in an apple sauce. And I sometimes put the CMOS gel into that apple sauce. And then the crumble on top is actually uh, walnuts, soaked walnuts, um, mashed up with um, some dates. The cream on the side is macadamia nut cream. So the way that you can make a vegan alternative to cream is literally just soaking nuts overnight and then blending them the next day with, uh, you know, changing the water, blending them the next day with some kind of sweetener. You can put soaked dates or um, honey or maple syrup or something like that. Um, you can put CMOS gel into that cream. So you are eating the CMOS gel in the cream and you will not taste it. But you know, commercially in food world, they actually use um, CMOS is it, a, a version of CMOS gel, an altered version of CMOS gel, in fact, um, that they put something called potassium hydroxide onto. So they got the regular CMOS and then they would put this chemical onto it to use it as a thickener in foods. Now, when you, uh, a, when you alter the CMOS by putting that chemical onto it, that's when it becomes unhealthy because you may find some articles talking about the fact that carrageen or carrageenan is unhealthy and it's not it's not the, the original CMOS it's when they distort it for food purposes um, that it becomes unhealthy because it's been affected by the chemical that it's been used with uh, used alongside of um, so yeah you can put it into uh, creams um, cheesecakes um, ice cream so you're just blending it into other things that um, that you won't just see, you won't basically taste it, but you're still consuming it. You can also stir it into soups, stews, and gravies because the gel itself, it melts into hot water. And I'm hoping to show you that right now. It melts into hot water really quickly without leaving any residue. 
Um, so you can easily put it into, stir it into your children's soups or mix it into gravies um, or uh, stews or those kind of ways to get it into your body as well. You can also use it as a vegetable. So my, um, the sister that I work with, um, who's a loctician and really into natural health and stuff like that, who uses sea moss, she said that she actually soaks her sea moss and then chops it up and stir fries it. So that's, and I've heard since then, I've heard other people use, use it in that way as well. So there's other seaweeds like hijiki, which is the, the black one that you can get, which is quite thin. And then again, you soak it the same way you do with sea moss um, and it, it you know puffs up. That one, you traditionally use that um, as a, sea, uh, a stir fry addition. And you can do the same thing with sea mosses as well. Like the family has been saying, you can use it as a face mask. So again, you get that, um, the gel and you smear it all. You wash, I recommend sisters you, or brothers, you wash your face first to remove the dirt. I also recommend you get a hot flannel and put it over your face to, to open up your pores. They say open up your pores, but it's really opening up the spaces between your, your cells on your face. So it makes your skin more abs uh, absorptive when you open up the, the pores like that. So you put a hot flannel over your face for just a moment. Then you put the sea moss gel on um, and you leave it on like a nice thin layer covering everywhere. You can put it down your neck, um, leave it on there for at least 20 minutes. And then again, get a nice warm cloth and wipe it all off. And then you shouldn't have to wash your face again because you've already washed your face initially. And that will allow all that nutrients to be absorbed into your skin. Now, sisters, you may have been sold skincare products um, on the basis of them having collagen, which is really good at rebuilding the structure of your skin and preventing um, wrinkles and premature aging and all those kind of things. And collagen is something that's been found um, in seed moss as well. So those expensive skincare products um, have the same thing as our amazing sea moss gel. You can also use it as a hair mask. So like the brother was saying, it can help to grow your hair. As brother Akon was saying, it can help with hair growth. Because the sea moss is so high in iron, iron is responsible for cell division and cell growth. And this, your hair is obviously growing from your scalp, from just underneath your scalp in the hair bud. So having that sea moss gel on your scalp and then run down the, the strands of your hair helps to add that protein, helps to add that iron and the other minerals as well so even things like when your skin when your scalp is lacking in calcium and magnesium um, it can cause tr pr problems with your scalp so it's also very nourishing for your scalp and if your scalp is not healthy your hair won't be healthy as well so you can use it as a hair mask um, as opposed to a leave-in conditioner so a mask is when you put it on your hair let it sit for a little while and then you uh, rinse it out as opposed to something that you leave on not to say that you can't leave it on i just haven't had enough um, experience or have enough research to, to, to confirm that you can leave it on. Um, you can also just have it in tea or hot water. So I'm actually going to see if I can demonstrate this. So this is my, oh, they can't see it. All right, I'm going to demonstrate when I take the, um, <laughs> when I stop sharing my screen. But you can mix it into hot water or tea, and that's the way a lot of my clients will use their CMOS. Um, so you just literally mix it into your water and then you can't taste it. It just makes the water a little bit more thick. Um, and now this is the way that I think people have the most qualms about doing, but I've seen this have the biggest impact. When I'm working with clients and we've already cleaned up their diet and they're taking natural supplements, drinking more water, exercising more, removing the foods that are challenging and they've included sea moss, the clients I work with who it have their sea moss in just in water or just off the spoon tend to get quicker results. Um, as in their nutrient deficiencies stabilize more quickly, um, their skin looks better, their hair looks better more quickly, their energy improves more quickly, their white blood cell health is improved more quickly, the, the quality of their blood looks better more quickly when they are taking it just off the spoon. Now, when I started my journey into sea moss, I was like, there's no way, fam, you are getting me. No way on earth are you getting me to eat jelly off a spoon. It's not happening, fam, innit? <laughs> but I don't even like jelly from school days, much less you're getting me to drink sea, eat sea moss jelly off the spoon. Um, but now, I'm a big girl now, so I do drink it just stirred into water and sometimes off the spoon as well. And even for me, who really, I'm really particular about my the taste of things, you literally cannot taste it. It's, it will make your mouth feel a bit mucky, um, but you literally can't, there's not a great taste. If it does taste strong, fam, it, you just need to get 
I, maybe you've misstored it. Maybe it was out of the fridge too long. The fridge ain't working properly and it's gone off. Um, but when it's well made, and the other thing is I soak mine in with lime as well. So when I'm soaking mine, I'll cut limes, like half a lime, and squeeze it in and put the, you know, wash the skin really well and put that all in the water as it's soaking. So the vitamin C um, and the oils in the skin of the lime, all of those help to deodorize the the water and help to um kill off any bacteria that's in there as well and alkaline um out, help to alkalize the water so this is a cheesecake and again the recipe for my book is raw food feast this is a cheesecake that i make it's one of the favorite cheesecakes that i make in the house it's completely raw and vegan and one of the things that's really helping it to to stay firm is sea moss gel there's about half a cup of sea moss gel blended into it the main ingredients in this are soaked cashews coconut oil coconut milk um, and then some dates and then the sea moss gel and chocolate powder as well. So now you can get pre-made sea moss gel. There's a, a family that makes a really fancy sea moss gel um, called seamossforlife.co.uk. So they put turmeric and they put um, uh, salsac and chlorella and bee, sorry, butterfly pea flower uh, powder in their gels. So you can get all those super fancy ones um, at cmosforlife.co.uk. They're a beautiful family. Um, and then I sell the simple ones, which is just CMOS with um, water and lime juice. That's it. And the, there's not actually lime juice poured into it. It's just the lime that's um, the lime juice that's added to it during the soaking process. So you can find that at the naturally you kitchen. Dot com and if you use the um, discount code hidden science you can get 15% off your order until tomorrow night midnight Thursday 21st of January so that's naturally you to get your CMOS gel now again how do I know that CMOS gel works because I do live blood analysis um, even as a nutritionist when clients come into me and you know tell me what they what's going on with them and then we change their diet and then they come back or we have a telephone consultation and they've implemented the recommendations that I've given, the more they implement, the more benefits we can see. And I can visually see changes in people's health with their blood samples as well. So the pictures at the top is how you would kind of prefer your blood to look nice and round, clear in the middle, um, and not too close to other cells. That's a quote unquote healthy picture of blood. But then you can have challenges with your blood, you can have excess, um, unhealthy protein, your digestive system's not working, you can have clotting, you can have um, sticky blood, you can have digestive challenges where clumps of undigested fat and protein stay in your blood, um, and we can identify that. And I've literally seen people's lives been turned around by the inclusion of CMOS gel, as well as, like the, all the brothers have been saying, the CMOS gel is complementary, it's not alternative, CMOS gel is not alternative. It's not, I either eat healthy or I take CMOS gel. No, it's complementary. I'm going to eat healthy and I'm going to add the CMOS gel and the CMOS gel is going to be that icing on the cake because maintaining your health... Minutes, uh, thank you. Maintaining your health is easier than regaining or trying to repair your health. And it takes more than just one product. Like, none of us on this call are snake oil salesmen. We're not trying to sell you one thing that's going to remedy everything. We're all very much promoting that holistic health is where it is. And you can, you can maintain your health by combining the food you're eating every single day with high quality superfoods, most of which our ancestors um, grew up on. And a lot of us remember either our parents or grandparents talking about regularly. Um, you add those things to the foundation of a healthy diet and that's where you can get great health. So again, you can find me at the naturallyyoucoach.com. I'm going to unshare my screen for a moment so I can show you some of the things that um, I've been talking about. So this is the CMOS gel um, that I have. It comes in a pouch like this. I put my own pouches so you can freeze it more easily. So when you freeze it, it will freeze like in, an, in like two or three hours. When you want to defrost it, I'd recommend that you take it out of the freezer. So if you buy your CMOS in a glass jar, again, I bet you don't put the glass jar in the freezer and then the thing smashes and then you lose most of your CMOS. So transfer it into a plastic container. Um, again, BPA free preferably. And then you can freeze it in the plastic container. Um, and then you, unless you've got the glass that you can freeze, some people have got those special glasses you can freeze. To defrost it, put it in the fridge. It's best not to leave it on the counter. Put it in the fridge so it doesn't, the temperature doesn't get too high and bacterial growth happens. 
defrost it in the fridge and it will defrost overnight. Like I put the frozen one of these in the fridge and then in the morning it's, it's back to being soft again. So again, these are the sea mosses that I have. So this is the purple sea moss. So we've already seen all these before. And this is the white sea moss or the golden sea moss. Now, I've, now this, this amount of purple sea moss, the dry one, makes this amount of, well, makes all this, all of that, makes so much, wow. it sounds rapidly. So even after you've soaked it, it just, uh, sorry, after you've rinsed it, you still need to let it soak for a little while so it can rehydrate, and then it produces all of this lovely, so that's the purple wild crafted one. And then you make the gel, and then the gel, so this is the gel in here, and it's nice and firm. So you can see it in there, nice and firm. It's not gonna fall out, don't fall out, don't fall out. <laughs> don't embarrass me, gel. Okay, so that's a gel. Now, I've got here some hot, hopefully this works, demonstration please work. This is Blue Peter stuff, family. So I'm gonna put some hot water in here. So imagine this is tea, yeah? This is how easy it is to take your sea moss gel. So you've got your tea, and then I'm going to put a spoon of the sea moss gel in it. So I need to see how quickly this thing, hopefully you can see this. So it's going to, I'm going to mash it up and it's just going to dissolve. And it's not going to leave any big clumps. It's just going to dissolve nicely. And then you're just going to be left with a nice thick. It's not even that thick. That's the thing. It's not even like gloopy and mad thick. It's just slightly, it just, a bit, everyone, if you've got sea moss gel, you need to do me a favor and try this tomorrow. Don't let us have wasted this whole demonstration right now, okay? Because I'm really doing my best Blue Peter demonstration right now. So it's a nice, it's just changed the color slightly and it's almost completely dissolved. Completely dissolved. And let me, I'm gonna pour it into another cup. I'm gonna pour it into it so you can see it's not gloopy. It's not gloopy. It's just nice and, you literally cannot tell. And I'm gonna drink it, see? The other thing I'm gonna do, family, I'm going to eat it off the spoon so you can see. Listen, this is coming from a sister that does not eat things that don't taste good. Sea moss gel, watch, look. Dumb. Simple things. I know Charles and Econ are looking at me like, yeah, it's minor. But there's some people on the call right now that, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Trust me, I was a person that could never eat sea moss gel just like this. Oh, that's it, two spoons a day. That's all you need. Iron, calcium, magnesium, or you can get the gel again. Get the gel, sea moss, completely mask the taste by putting it into smoothies, by putting it into, so if you've got juice, you can stir it into your juice, but it will not melt down unless it's in something warm. So if you do want to have it in juices, you would have to put it in a blender, blend the juice and the sea moss together. And then again, it's just going to slightly thicken it, but not much more than that. Um, and that's it, seven or even eight ways that you can enjoy the wonders of sea moss gel. Wow, wow, wow. Can everyone show their appreciation for Leah? Put ones in the comments, show your appreciation for Leah. That was truly amazing. I know there's a lot of questions. Thank you, everyone. Let's see if we can get through to some. All right, so remember raise your hand and i'll get to you and please try and keep your questions short and sweet because we've got quite a few people to get through Leah, if you can just talk a little bit more about the cmos that you sell i'll just be back in one second again i sell so not i do sell the dry moss so i sell the purple moss the wild crafted one so again like the brothers were saying the you've got the ocean farmed one so this is the ocean farm one now the thing with ocean farmed is like the brother Charles was saying, what my the brother that I buy it from from St. Lucia says is that they drop tires to the bottom of the ocean with cement in them, and then they tie ropes up from those tires up to the top of the ocean water, and then they run more ropes along the ocean water, and that frame, they use that kind of frame to grow the sea moss on. Like the brother said, some of them are in shallow water, some of them are in quite deep water, but my 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 biggest consideration is that I don't want them to be, I would never buy or recommend someone buys the ones that are grown in swimming pools because that's when there is no movement of the sea, there is no nutrients from the sun, 
There's no nutrients from the other elements in the water that are feeding that sea moss. It's just a sterile pool that they grow these sea moss in, and then they have to put artificial um, nutrients in the water, in the swimming pool, to grow that sea moss. So whether it's in shallow water or the deeper water, I'm actually okay with ocean farms because I know that it's still getting the nutrients from the sun and it's still getting the nutrients from the movement of the sea water. So that's the one I've got the ocean farms um, golden one and then I've got the wild crafted. So wild crafted family means that a diver has to dive to the bottom of the water and pull the sea moss out from the sea bed. So it's drawing the nutrients, not just from the sun and the movement of the sea, but from the, the actual seabed, which is why it's more expensive because they can't control the growth of the um, wild crafted one. They just have to go down there and see what the ocean's grown. Now, please bear this in mind. When it comes to ocean farming um, and wild crafted, please just get what you can afford to have consistently because I know not everybody can afford the wild crafted one consistently um, because if... The thing is, every fruit and vegetable we eat is farmed. If you have to put a, a seed in the ground to grow something, then it's farmed. So vast, vast, almost everything we eat, all fruits and vegetables are farmed. They, someone is controlling and deciding, okay, I'm planting this and waiting for it to grow. And it's the same with ocean farmed seaweed. So if you can afford to um, have ocean farm seaweed, then definitely just get ocean farm seaweed if it means you're going to have it more consistently than rather than not having it because you're not able to afford the wild crafted one. So again, if you go to my website, the naturallyyoucoach.com um, or the naturally you kitchen in the chat. Hi, darling. Can you post your details in the chat or send them to me and I'll post it for you? So your website, your socials, your email Hi. for consultations. Hi, Danica. Hi, Vlad. Hey, sis. Just post your details or send them to me and then I'll post post them in there while you're answering questions, etc. I will. Um, okay. So yeah, you can get, so if you use the, the coupon code, the discount coupon code, Hidden Science, then you can get 15% off anything you order, the dry sea moss, the golden sea moss, the purple one, or the actual sea moss gel. Now I see, sell my sea moss gel in two sizes. So this is the small one, which is 290 grams. I've, I've worked out that this is roughly 14 slightly rounded tablespoons. So I'll show you exactly the tablespoon size while we're waiting for my brother. So there's 14 of that, like slightly rounded tablespoons, probably a bit more actually, probably like that. There's about 14 of those in there. So if you wanted to have two tablespoons a day, this would be a, a one week supply. And then I've got one double this size, which is a two week supply. So again, you can freeze it if you're going to use it within the week or two weeks. And then it's got the use by dates on it as well, because I make mine in small batches so that the quality remains high. Um, and then there's a use by date on there. So if you want to freeze it, freeze it before the use by date. And then you can freeze it for the three months um, and then take it out. When you defrosted it, you would have to use it within about two to three days, though. That's the only consideration after you have um, defrosted it. All right, everyone, we're going to move on to another special guest. You will be able to answer your quest, uh, ask your questions after this. So I'm just gonna move on to Chris, who's actually a supplier of CMOS. So he's just gonna talk for about five, 10 minutes about what he knows about CMOS and then you guys can ask him questions and then I'm gonna finish up with some science. All right, so big up my very special guest, Chris. Thank you for joining us, brother. That's cool, Leon, that's cool. Thank you for having me, Leon. Share your knowledge, bro, because I know you know a lot about CMOS, having, you know, being a supplier, so you, you see it coming in and that sort of stuff. So take it away, brother. Thank you for inviting me, Leon. Hello to everyone and previous speakers. Um, I'm the co-owner for MF Products, the UK. I import CMOS, but not only CMOS, but like um, other products like Moringa, Moringa seed, source of powder, and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, um, I use CMOS on a daily basis, really. Um, I use it in my smoothies um, as a supplement. Um, I kind of grew up on CMOS. Um, my business partners, they are farmers, and my dad is a fisherman. So I actually import CMOS and 
moringa powder and sour sap powder. Now for me, I use these things every day um, in vegetables, just drink it regularly, um, just, just on a regular basis. But what I found out over the years is that um, I've seen an increase in the demand for CMOS from females. And that is something interesting to me. So for me, I found like, you know, people are finding the benefits or yeah, are kind of, what I say, you know, researching more and finding the benefits of CMOS. And like for now, for us, CMOS is one of our most popular products. But not only that, um, our story really started by, I would say my story really started by um, a visit to Jamaica. Um, in the Blue Mountains. And we originally started out um, selling coffee, Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee. And I had a lot of customers just making inquiries about other Jamaican products. And one of the main ones was CMOS. And I started to kind of do some more research and stuff like that about the CMOS. And I spoke to my dad about it and stuff like that. And yeah, that's how the entire journey started and the, how, how the business was born, really. So, you know, generally speaking, I use CMOS on a daily basis in so many different ways. Um, in my veg, um, in juice, water, smoothies. Um, one of the benefits I find for CMOS for me personally is it helps me to sleep. It helps me to sleep. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps me. It, it helps me in the night to sleep. So yeah, I'm just gonna pass it over to you now, Leon. And brother, if I could ask you, what 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 different types do you see um, coming in, like from the Caribbean and that? Like, just you don't need to know the names of them, but just um, the texture of them, how they look, the color. Oh man, because see, it's like there's so many different kind of seamers, and because the ocean is so big. You know, yeah. you, you'll get fat sea mass, you'll get skinny sea mass, you'll get salted ones, you'll, you'll get purple ones, you'll get red ones, you'll get mixed ones. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's mixed, it's, it's vast. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it just varies. It, it just varies a lot. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. All right, we're going to go to some of the questions. Just before we go to some of the questions, like uh, Brother Chris was saying, there's so many different types of CMOS, so, so many different types of CMOS. However, hold on a second, show. There's so many different types, like he says, the C is massive. So obviously you're gonna have different types of CMOS. However, the two main ones, I'm gonna go over the two main ones. I'm gonna get to the people asking questions, but let me just share my screen. And I'm gonna show you literally live the two main ones that people talk about. So let me know if you can see my screen. Let me go to Google, yeah? The two main ones. Does anyone know the name of the, the CMOS that Dr. Sabi uh, promoted? Someone put it in the chat. What was the name of the CMOS that Dr. Sabi was promoting? Conjus Crispus, thank you, someone. Con Conjus Crispus. This is the one that Dr. Savi promoted. So I'm just going to Conjus Crispus, go to images, and this is how Conjus Crispus looks. Can you see that, everyone? Can you see that it looks like, looks like a tree? This is after it's, um, you know, been soaked. Kind of looks like a tree. And look, look, it's a little bit thicker. Now, when it, before it's soaked, it looks very crispy. It looks very crunchy. But after it's soaked, it looks like this, yeah? Now, someone in the chat mentioned grassy, what's it, gracilaria? Gracilaria, gracilaria. This is the other type. There's loads of types, but I'm just showing you two main types, gracilaria. This is the thinner type. So people, if you've got CMOS at home, take a look at your CMOS. If it's thin like this, this is the gracilaria type. If it's thin like this, even after you soak it, it still looks quite thin, yeah? 
after you soak it, that's gracilaria. But if after you soak it, it looks like this, then you know that's conjus crispus. I hope that cleared up any confusion there, yeah? So those are the two main types. There are other types, but those are the two main types. All right, let's get to some of these questions. All right, remember people, if you wanna, if you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. If not, please lower your hand. Okay. Lakeisha, is it Lakeisha? Please unmute your mic and ask your question, please, sis. Hi, um, greetings everybody. Um, I just wanted to know is, I know you just explained about the differences between different types of mosses, but um, I get an Irish moss. Is there a difference between Irish moss and sea moss? All right, I, I'm going to try and answer this one. Then I want anyone who knows any <clears throat> more information, including Econ, to, to um, come in. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Brother Chris, but in Jamaica, what they call Irish moss is slightly different to conscious crispus. What they call Irish moss in Jamaica, yeah? What they call yeah. Irish moss. It kind of looks dry, it kind of looks thicker. Yeah. yeah. In Jamaica, this is what Irish moss, because I'm from Jamaica, so when they say Irish moss, it kind of looks thicker and uh, the, the best way to describe the, the, the look of it is, uh, I remember someone saying a centipede, you know, like a caterpillar. Yeah, that's it's correct. Bumpy and bubbly like that. That's how it looks. That's Irish moss, yeah? Conjus crispus is not like that. And nor is gracilaris, mm. gracil gracilaria or whatever they call it, yeah? Now, Irish moss, if you're taking Irish moss, which I just described, that is great for detoxing the body. Okay. Yeah? It's great for getting rid of things out of the body. So you see when Dr. Sabi said, um, getting mucus out of the body, Irish moss is going to be very powerful for that. Conjus crispus is good for building the body up. And I will show the science behind that in a sec. Conjus okay. crispus is good for building the body up. Irish moss and different types of sea moss are good at getting rid of, you know, mucus and that sort of stuff. So it's better for detoxing. I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. Leon, yes, when, sis. when I started doing research, when I started selling sea moss, what's, what's happened in the marketing world is that we, we used to call a lot of different sea mosses um, Irish moss. Yes. So we don't necessarily always know whether it you because the one that I sell is Uchima cottonil, then you've got the Condus crispus, then you've got the Gracialia. Then, see, there's lots of different um, scientific names, but people just all said sea moss or moss. Um, now, there's a brother that sells sea moss and he does, he can't stand the term Irish moss because he's like, black people have got a very contentious history with the Irish, is moss, it's not Irish moss, they don't own all the moss, it's sea moss. A lot of Irish, a lot of moss was actually grown off the coast of Ireland and that type of sea moss was also found in different parts of the West Indies, so they called all of it Irish moss, even though it had different scientific names. So it's like everyone calls a vacuum cleaner a hoover, but Hoover is the name of the company, the brand, as opposed to what the device is. The device is a vacuum cleaner. So all, all mosses are sea mosses because they're mosses that are grown in the sea as opposed to moss grown on the side of a tree or on a wall. But they have different actual um, scientific names. Irish moss isn't even actually an, a scientific name. It's just like a catch-all term that describes the geographic location of where that moss was grown. So when you hear sea moss or Irish moss, that's just the, the blanket term. If you want to know what type of sea moss or, or Irish moss it is, that's when you would have to find out what the actual um, scientific name is it, of it is. It just is a carrageen, um, Thank a you for carrageen that. moss, which... Lakeisha? Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question, sis. Yeah, thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you. If you can oh. mute yourself, please. Uh, let's move on to... I think I've understood more since I actually put the, the I wanted to find out something about the differences. But what I was asking was, how would I know? Because I've got a Caribbean um, shop that I used to go to town and buy certain products from, um, and they've moved nearer to my neighborhood. So how would I know if their type of sea moss is legit? 
I'm assuming if I buy from a West Indian shop, it's going to be legit. But how would I really know? If if the see if the CMOS, it doesn't matter what. No one can say in the world I have the best CMOS. That's not saying no, I have the no. best berries. That's no. not saying I have the best mangoes. Right. No one has the best CMOS. There's many right. varieties of CMOS. Yeah. And what you want to be looking for is dry. Dry, 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 yeah. brittle, ass dry. It has to be yeah. dry. It if it's still a little bit that. wet, you don't <laughs> want it. You don't want it if it's wet or damp no. or okay. just or mad salty, crazy yeah. thick and salty. Yeah. That's not what you want. You want dry, dry, dry. Yeah. You want thin, you want it to be a little bit thin as well. Mm -hmm. And 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 don't worry too much about, you know. Is this one better than this one? Is that no, one better than that, that one? The All I've never the CMOS it. is going to help you. I've never bought it. My my grandnephew suggested it's a good one to get rid of mucus and this COVID and all the rest of it. So I thought, I said to my husband, go to the shop because it's closed because we're in lockdown. I live mm. in Luton. So um, luckily they were open. And they just opened before Christmas. So I'm trying to support them, you know. And um, so I bought it. But like now I'm getting more educated on this platform. I'm looking Excellent. at the differences. I'm warming towards, I mean, I like seaweed and I used to buy what they termed a seaweed in a Chinese restaurant back in the day. And it was, it, it's kind of slimy to eat. That used to be in, this was like in the eighties where I used to buy and I used to fall in love with the mushroom and the seaweed. So hearing about seaweed in a different form, like the, the sea moss, I went, don't think I'm going to like that, never tasted it. I've boiled it, I soaked it, and then I boiled it, and it was very gloopy. And as my son's saying now, aloe vera is like, it reminds him of okra, because I'm trying to get back into eating okra. Didn't like it as a child. There's a lot of things we didn't like. But Francis, I'm, can I'm, we I'm, move on? Because there's quite a few people that want to speak, you know, so. Sorry, yeah, so basically, I was just wondering whether... Um, there's, well, I'd like to try Leah's brand as well and support you and try the purple one. But all of them, at the end of the day, they turn a gel when you when you boil it. Yeah. I can't remember your name in the white hoodie, my darling. Um, your method of blending it. Chat, I'm going to post Leah's details in the chat so you can contact yeah, I Leah. I did find it and I subscribed to her. But okay. um, I forgot the guy in the white hoodie. What's your name? Econ. Econ. Okay. So your way of describing of doing a smoothie, that appeals to me <laughs> very yeah, much. Really, that's that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Thank and you, I'll sis. We're going to move on because there's quite Thank a few you. people. I know we're not going to be able to get through to everyone. No, so. I understand. So Thanks for that, sis. Thank everybody on there anyway, yeah? It's All right. Interesting. Thank you. All right. So next up, let's see if we can get Brother Kellyon. If you can unmute yeah. your mic, Kel. Yeah, yeah, you can hear me, yeah? Yes, brother. Yeah, yeah, great question. Econ, you, you did say this earlier. Uh, this is yes. regarding the, um, the uh, not what well, you didn't say waste, you said the quality of the sea going to, um, going, is it going to the West, something like that, with regards to, I believe, pollution yeah. or mercury. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's fully now put into the sea. Yeah. So obviously, if you eat fish, that's going to harm you because somebody did put that in in the groups. So my question to you um, is: Mercury or, or pollution going to affect uh, the seaweed or the, or the sea moss produce that we're going to be? Um, the, the, the thing about mercury, yeah. If you went to a science laboratory and you was to get some mercury and pour it into salt water, you'll find that the mercury does not sink. Mercury is at the surface of the ocean, right? Now, you know, when you're pulling out the sea moss, maybe some of that sea moss might touch some of that mercury and that could create cross-contamination. That's totally understandable. However, once you've soaked your sea moss, most people like to soak their sea moss with lime. Lime is a deacidifier. Lime is very good for removing all inorganic substances from wounds, cuts. It's like an antiseptic almost. So lime is a very good thing to use. If you're, if you're really concerned, squeeze some lime into your water that you're um, soaking your sea moss into and it will be better for you to take it that way. But for us to now say, hold on, you know, the whole ocean might be contaminated. Let's stop eat, drinking sea moss. Let's stop eating fish. Let's stop doing, you know, it's, it's, it's not plausible. It's not practical. Thank you, you brother. 
All right, let's move on to Michaela. If you can unmute your mic and ask your question, please. Michaela. Michaela. Sorry, fam, while, he, while we're waiting for Michaela to com come on, it's also been found that the selenium that's found abundantly in a lot of fish and in sea moss as well, it actually helps to bind to mercury and make it inactive, which is why when they used to say that pregnant women shouldn't eat um, fish because of the mercury, a lot of pregnant women stopped getting enough healthy fat because they weren't accessing other foods with healthy fat in it. Um, and then it was found that actually most fish is okay because it's got high levels of selenium in it. And so does um, sea moss. So it kind of counteracts the negative impact of mercury that could contaminate it from the sea. I agree with what she said about the sea moss. All so. right. Thank you, brother. Uh, Zara, can you unmute your mic and ask your question, please? Zara. Hi. Um, Hi greetings, everyone. Thank you for today. Um, just wanted to know, does it matter which type of water you use to soak and rinse your sea moss? Good question. Do not soak your sea moss in tap water, please. That's just please. Um, a, good, a good filter that I use is called the Berkey water filter. Mm -hmm. B-E-R-K-E-Y the Berkey water filter. Filter your water and soak your water into that. If you can't afford the filter and you, and you want to soak your sea moss, go and purchase spring water. Um, if you can't afford to get it in a glass bottle, guess what? You're going to have to go to plastic. So there's different degrees. You can filter the water and soak it, or you can use bottled water and soak it, or glass bottled water and soak it. But yeah, try your water. best not to use try your best not to use um, tap water. Tap water is, it's just, yeah. I'm just, like, like sometimes it bring tears to your eyes to imagine <laughs> what they're putting into our water right now. It's yeah. crazy. All right. Anyone else? We're gonna, we're gonna get to you after my presentation. So um, thank you everyone. If you've got questions, I, you can either put them in the Q and A, there's quite a few in there, or you can raise your hand. We'll try and get to you afterwards, but a lot of people were talking about how it, how it helps your skin. I am now going to show you the science behind how it helps your skin, how it helps your bones, your joints. Um, I think Ekong or, or Leah talked about carrageenan, which is an extract of sea moss, a type of sea moss. I'm going to go through all of that. Someone talked about breast milk. I'm going to show you how sea... Listen, all right, it's time to start now. So... And whoever needs to go, don't worry. The, the replay of this webinar will be available this week. As long as you're following us on our social medias, my sister's going to post the social medias. As long as you're following us in our WhatsApp groups and or our Telegram, as long as you're following the Hidden Science Academy, you'll know when this gets posted, the replay. So you can watch it from start to finish, pause it, rewind, take notes and all that sort of stuff. So I'm about to go into mine, big up all the panelists, but I'm going to share my screen now and go into my presentation. All right, so let's start. Now, as this presentation will focus heavily on the science of CMOS, it makes sense to start with a definition of science that is easy to understand. So here's my definition of science. Science is logic backed up by evidence. This is my personal definition. And when I say logic, I just mean common sense. And then you back up your common sense with proof. That's all science is to me. So if I was to ask you what's two plus two, I'm assuming, I'm hoping that your common sense would say four. And then what if I said prove it? Then you'll just put two fingers on one hand, two fingers on the other and count them out loud. And there's your proof. Science to me is just logic backed up by evidence common sense and then show me the proof behind your common sense. Now, when you start to go with this definition of science, which I've been running with for quite some time now, you'll start to realize that science is simple. And I like to keep things super simple because a wise man once said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. That was arguably the greatest scientist of all time, Albert Einstein. And I agree with this statement. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. But I take it one step further. I'd say if someone's explaining something to you, especially science, and they can't explain it simply, it means they don't understand the subject well enough, or they do, 
they just don't want you to understand it. So they explain it to you in a confusing way, in a complex way, so you don't get it. It's either one of the two. So with me, I like to keep things super simple because to me, science is just, is just two plus two. Or as another wise man once said, Boom! Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. Quick maths. That's all science is to me, quick maths. So as we go through this presentation, I'm just gonna keep things super simple. Now, for the people who have never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before, I've got one thing to say. You're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn today. So what are you gonna learn today? This is what I'm gonna go through in my very quick presentation. I'll quickly go over real versus fake CMOS because we've already gone through that. I'm gonna quickly go over the different types of CMOS. CMOS for bones and joints plus much more, no typo. All right, now before I start, here's some quick, uh, I just wanna ask a question. If you guys can put this into the chat so I, so I get your answers. What type of supplements are, anyone in the chat, what type of supplements are you taking for your joints? Can you name them please? If anyone's taking any type of supplements for your joints, because I know a lot of us are suffering from joint issues, magnesium. Anything else? Some, some people saying they're taking vitamin D supplements. Okay. Anything else? Even if you can get whatever you're taking, it might have been something prescribed to you. Let me see. All right, let me just unshare my screen and show you something. I'm just gonna go to the internet. A lot of people seem to be taking things like gluco, I mean, anyone seen things like this? Has anyone seen stuff like this for joints? Yeah. So look at look at these things: glucosamine, glucosamine, and chondroitin. Glucosamine. This is what seems to be prescribed to people who have joint issues. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. Those sort of things. A lot of you who maybe were prescribed something, a lot of you might even have that as your prescription. You might have to look at it and think, oh yeah, I've got that if, you've, if you're suffering from joint issues. All right. Now I'm gonna show you a video from Dr. Sabi where Dr. Sabi breaks down the real versus fake CMOS. Now, after everything that you've heard today, listen carefully to what he says and then we're gonna break it down. Very short clip, but listen carefully to what he says. This is Dr. Sabi talking about real versus fake CMOS. I've recently discovered that there are quite a few people who are not aware of what real CMOS is supposed to look like. So I've made this video so that you all can hear from Dr. Sabi himself what real CMOS is supposed to look like and what the texture is supposed to be when you prepare it. Dr. Sebi, I, uh, since uh, having been introduced to you, I've uh, bellowed the, the virtues of CMOS, as you have. And, but I'm having a great deal of difficulty finding fresh CMOS in this country. Can you, A, elaborate on the benefits and the virtues of CMOS, and secondly, uh, perhaps help me I have find some fresh sea moss yeah, in this. Very country. good. Thank you. Uh, sea moss is known scientifically, there we go again, chondroscriptus, am I right? Sea moss comes from the ocean. It locks onto a rock. Onto a rock. And from that rock, it receives its nutrients. Dr. Sebi, how could that be possible? A plant hold on to a rock? Yes. Scientists have yet to understand how could a plant hold on to a rock and then give you food. 
Well, you know what they did? They invented a word. This is the word. A 15-letter word. They call it iantrophorosis. Now dig that. They don't understand the workings of God, but they're going to give it a name. That a plant has the ability to convert a solid oxide substance into a liquid digestible substance. They call it iantrophorosis. Sea moss does that. And every plant does that. But sea moss has iodides, bromides, it has all of the minerals, phos phosphorus, which is good for the thyroid gland, which is good for the endocrine system, and it's going to give you energy. And it has muscle food. They call it manito, sea moss. Like the man, <laughs> the man made pe peppermint, and he made aloe vera, he, na he made noni juice. He made vitamin C out of acerola berry. But guess what he did in Boston? And you guys don't know it, and it's dangerous. The man went to the ocean and got a piece of sea moss. Because he knows that sea moss grows in the ocean where the sea is in constant motion. Sea moss doesn't grow where the sea stands still. It has to be in motion, and sea moss grows. So this man in Boston went and got pieces of sea moss, put it in this brine with salt on a machine, and he moved it. The, the machine is constantly moving, and lo and behold, the sea moss grows very thick, very thick and very fast. And when you get a little bit of it, and you put it in the pot, it gives you a whole lot of mucilage. The natural sea moss doesn't give you a whole lot of mucilage. And the talus of the sea moss, I mean the little strings, thin, thin, thin like this. Very thin. Just like this. But the other one is three times the size. And the other one, three times the size, it always has salt on it. Natural sea moss has no salt on it. And it gives you energy. Okay. It stopped there. But he goes on to explain what <laughs> conjures Christmas is. And he explains that the, the fake one has got all the salt on it. Yeah. So we've gone through that already. So just so we know that the fake one is more salty. Yeah. He also goes on to say, and you can find that clip on YouTube. He also goes on to say that there are various different types of sea mosses. So let's just quickly go through some of them. Carrageenan, that was mentioned earlier by Ekong and Leah. And because, like Leah was saying, um, the way the industry works, once um, we run with sea moss, if the industry gets a hold of it and they they take little extracts from it, then they'll name it something else. So carrageenan is an extract from CMOS. Now, again, if you if I'm going too fast, don't worry, the replay of this will be available very soon. There's something called agar agar. Has anyone heard of that? Agar agar or agar, some people just call it agar. We're going to go over that in a little bit. Agar. Gracilaria. We've talked about this. Gracilaria. That is the thin, the thin type of CMOS is gracilaria. Now, remember, None of these are quote unquote bad. These are just different types, different types. The gracilaria one is going to be good for detoxing the body, getting stuff out of, you know, your system, detoxing the body, mucus. And then the one that Dr. Sabi was promoting is chondrus crispus. That is the one after you soak it, each one looks like a little, like leaves and like a, like a tree. Yeah. So now you know the different types. Conjus Crispus is the one that Dr. Sabi was promoting. So that's the one I'm going to really focus on. Now, I, I've, I've got this video from a YouTube channel. I think the YouTube channel is called Bliss's Kitchen. Bliss, 
Bliss's Kitchen. I think the sister, her name is Bliss. And she just shows you how Conscious Crispus looks after it's been soaked. So take a look at this video just to show you how Conscious Crispus looks. So now when you guys have your one, you'll know whether or not it's Conscious Crispus. Look at this video. So this is how you identify Conscious Crispus. You can see that these bits of the leaves are very flat. It almost looks like a tree. This is how you're able to identify Conjus crispus. Its natural color is this purple and this greeny. Um, it's only found in the cold waters and naturally when it's in the sea, it will have like hints of blue fluorescent. Um, so yeah, it's very fluffy. Again, like a flat, almost stem with fluffy, fluffy ends. It's one of the best sea mosses that you can get. This is the sea moss that Dr. Sebi is talking about. This is the sea moss that the Irish lived on. All right, so are we all clear on that now? What Conjus crispus is? This is how it should look. And it should, after you soak it, it should get quite fluffy. It soaks up the water. That is Conjus crispus. So if you've got the thinner one, it doesn't mean you've got a bad sea moss. It just means you've got gracilaria and gracilaria is better for detoxing the body. This one's better for building up the body. All right, now here are the questions that I'm gonna answer. Why is conjus crispus good for bones, ligaments, tendons, and joints? And can it truly speed up recovery after surgery? Yeah? And can everyone put their mics on mute, including the people that have raised their hand, just make sure you're on mute. All right, now to answer this question, you need to understand proteins, yeah? And when I say proteins, I don't mean this stuff. Again, it's like we've been taught science in such a confusing way. We think that this stuff is protein. No, when I'm talking about proteins, I'm talking about what happens inside of your body. So this is not protein. I'm talking about this stuff. Proteins are just amino acids which have connected together and are folding and unfolding inside of your body. In other words, your body makes its own proteins from amino acids. Now, the people who've done my, the hidden science of nutrition, when I went over proteins, you'll understand this. Plus the, the people who have done my hidden science of black holistic health course, you'll understand that proteins are just amino acids. So look at this. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. They combine to, to form peptides. And when those peptides fold, they create po proteins. Yeah. So why is protein so important? So that's what everything is made of in your body, your skin, your muscles. Pretty much everything in your body is made from these amino acids. And if you want to understand protein, you need to understand collagen because the most abundant protein in the human body is collagen. Look at this. More than 100 different structural proteins have been discovered in the human body, but the most abundant by far is collagen. So I remember Leah spoke about collagen being good for the skin. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body, and it makes up about 6% of total body weight. Collagen makes up 30% of bone tissue and comprises large amounts of tendons, ligaments, cartilage, skin, and muscles. And if you go onto Wikipedia, they say pretty much the same thing. Um, collagen is the main structural protein in extracellular matrix found in the body's connective tissues. As the main component of connective tissue is the most abundant protein in mammals. You are a mammal. As a human being, you come under the mammal category, yeah? And then it goes on to say, depending upon the degree of mineralization, collagen tissues may be rigid, like bone, compliant, like tendon, or have a, a gradient from rigid to compliant, which is cartilage. That means literally, if you're eating uh, something for your protein, understand that's not just for your muscles, that's for your bones, your tissues, your ligaments, your cartilage, your skin. Now, where do we get our collagen from? Where can we get it from? Like, where can we consume it? Your body creates it. Your body creates it from amino acids. However, we might have been consuming collagen 
for many, many years and we didn't even realize it. Yeah? Because that's what gelatin is. Now, this is not coming from Leo Marshall. This is coming from PETA, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. Let's see what they say about ge gelatin. And they go on to gelatin alternatives. They say it's probably no coincidence that gelatin rhymes with skeleton because that's exactly what it is. Animal bones, along with animal skin, hooves, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, all boiled together in a goo that's added to all kinds of candy and baked goods. Luckily, there are plenty of easy to find products that act like gelatin. All right, now, I'm sure most people on this webinar knew that gelatin is in sweets. So now you know, when you're consuming gelatin, when you're consuming sweets, you're consuming collagen from other animals. You're consuming their hooves, you're consuming their skin, you're consuming their tendons, their ligaments, their cartilage. That is what gelatin is, yeah? So all of this stuff, when you're feeding your children, oh, is it Sister Mute? Sister Mute, if you can put your, oh, Sister Mut, if you can put your uh, mic on mute, my sister's saying. Just make sure you're on mute. All right, so all of the sweets that you give your children, understand what you're giving them now. If it's gelatin, if it's got gelatin in it, that is cartilage from another animal. That is tendons, tissues, bones from another animal. It's just been boiled up and made into a goo, into a gel and made into sweets. So that's what, that's what I know I, I ate these when I was younger, so. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm this perfectly healthy human being. I, I ate loads of sweets when I was younger, but it's not just sweets. Gelatin is found in wine and beer. I kid you not. Gelatin is found in wine and beer. And it's also found in certain peanut products. I kid you not. It's certain, certain peanut products, products will contain gelatin. This is a peanut product, it's called planters. This is a, an American peanut product, but who knows? You know, anytime something happens in America, it always comes over here. So certain peanut products have gelatin in it. Peanuts, you know, why would they put gelatin in peanuts and wine and beer? Crazy where they're putting this stuff. All that cartilage that you're eating, because that's what you're eating. When you're eating gelatin, you're eating cartilage. Now, what is cartilage? I got this off of an orthopedic site. Uh, a medical site called Ortho Carolina. It says cartilage 101. What is cartilage and what does it do? And the doctor, the doctor's name is Brian Saltzman. And it says, we often hear about the importance of cartilage to protect our joint health, but what exactly is cartilage and how does it keep our joints healthy? Cartilage is the main type of connective tissue seen throughout the body. It serves a variety of structural and functional purposes and exists in different types throughout our joints, bones, spine, lungs, ears, nose. So remember people, your bones were once cartilage. That's why when you're born, when a baby's born, they're very squidgy, they're very soft because it, they're just full of cartilage. That cartilage develops into bone, yeah? Cartilage develops into bone. Cartilage develops into all these different types of tissues. So the main type of tissue in your body is, is cartilage. And check this out. What is cartilage made of? Cartilage is a strong and smooth substance made up of chondrocytes or specialized cartilage cells that produce a matrix of collagen and proteoglycans. These materials help cartilage attract water and give it its shape and specific properties. Chondrocytes, when I saw that word, the thing is, when it comes to science, the easiest way to understand science is to break down the words. You need to understand the words that they use. So you need to break down those words. So when I saw the word chondrocyte, I wanted to break it down. So I went on to Google, what is chondrocyte? What is a chondrocyte? It says chondrocytes are the cells responsible for cartilage formation. And they are crucial for the process of endochondrial ossification, which is bone development. Yeah, chondrocyte. And again, let's break down the words. Anytime you're trying to understand science, break down the words. You've got to understand prefixes and you've got to understand suffixes. Let's start with the suffix site. Has anyone studied uh, medical terminology in the chat? 
Can anyone tell me what site means? Anytime you see the word C-Y-T-E, what does that pertain to? Let's see if anyone study. Yes, cells. P people are saying cells. Yes, cell. So anytime you see the word site, C-Y-T-E, that's cell or cells. Yeah, site, sites. What does chondral mean, though? Well, if you've done some research, you'll find that chondra, the prefix chondra, C-H-O-N-D-R, in medical terminology, refers to cartilage. So look at this. Chondra is a combining form, uh, combining form used uh, like a prefix meaning cartilage. Yeah. Hmm. So anytime you see the word chondra, it means cartilage. Chondra. Where have you heard that before? Chondra. Chondra. Con chondra. Where have you heard that before? Chondra. Is anyone putting two and two together right now? Chondra. Right. So now you know why chondrus crispus is so important for your bones and joints. It's literally going to create the cartilage that turns into your bones, your joints, your tendons, your ligaments. That's why they call it chondrus crispus. Crispy cartilage. Chondrus crispus. Science is simple. <laughs> All right. So oh, at the beginning, I asked, what supplements are you taking for your joints? And some of you mentioned certain supplements. Didn't you mention things like, I'm sure some of you have mentioned things like glucosamine and that sort of stuff. Hmm. Now check this out. Chondroitin in food. Most chondroitin, now you know chondra means cartilage, appears to be made from extracts of cartilaginous cow and pig tissues. So anytime you see the word chondroitin, understand that's coming from cow and pig. Hmm. Now, what type of supplements do you guys take for your joints? You take supplements like this, glucosamine, chondroitin, chondroitin. Now you understand why this is good for your joints because you're taking, you know, the cartilage <laughs> from other animals. So think about this. For the people who have joint issues, and I know there's a lot of us out there. For the people who have joint issues, here's your options. You can go and take a supplement like this, glucosamine chondroitin, or a supplement like this, chondroitin sulfate, you know, for your joints because chondra means cartilage, for your cartilage, for your li ligaments, for your tendons, for your skin, because your skin is made of co collagen as well, or you can just get some chondrus crispus. Which one are you gonna choose? Glucosamine chondroitin or chondrus crispus? I wonder, hmm, that's a tough choice to make, don't you think? And again, now you know what's in these things. Chondroitin is from cartilaginous cow and pig tissues. Cow trachea, pig ear, nose. Other sources include shark, fish, bird. This is what you take when you're taking supplements, people. And if you don't know the science, th this is how we get confused. Now you know when you see chondroitin, chondra, that's to do with cartilage. Why not just take Conjus crispus then? Chondra. All right, finish up. I'm gonna show you a clip from someone that I rate highly. His name is Dr. Inky, Dr. E-N-Q-I. Listen to what he says about Conjus crispus. He's got a video on YouTube. You can check it out after this. And it's called Dr. Sabi and Conjus crispus um, controversy. More. Listen to what he says about sea moss. Listen to this. Sea moss has been known to contain key nutrients to support bone formation, but it does not kickstart the process to reverse bone marrow loss. The secrets of chondrus crispus sea moss are not the over-exaggerated mineral content. Did you hear that? Okay, that's not yeah. it. It's the iodine, it's the water structuring, and it's the galactose. So it's not about the exaggerated mineral content. It's about the iodine. It's about the galactose and the water structuring. Now, for those who don't know what structured water is, 
we have to do my black holistic health course. We need to understand this science. It's going to save our lives, people. Structured water is what we need. And to understand that you need to do the black holistic health course or read Dr. Gerald Pollock's book, Four Phase of Water. But he talks about CMOS having galactose in it, yeah? And again, if you wanna check this out online, it's Dr. Inky, Conscious Crispus con Controversy, yeah? He talked about galactose. Now, what we don't know about um, sugar is, we always taught, taught, taught about glucose. We're always told about glucose, how glucose, the brain needs it, all your cells need it. But there's, there's actually eight types of sugars. There's glucose, fructose, and one of them is called galactose. Galactose, yeah? And then uh, the science behind it is those are monosaccharides. Then you have disaccharides like maltose, lactose, and sucrose. Then you have what they call polysaccharides, which are your complex carbohydrates where you've got the, the molecules of sugar all tied together. They call that poly. Poly means many. Polysaccharides is a long chain of sugars. This is what they call starches, these polysaccharides. But guess what conjus crispus is? Guess what most sea vegetables are? They are polysaccharides. They actually are starches. But the, the, what makes them powerful is they're not... Com, they're not com, um, bind together by glucose they're bind together by galactose galactose and guess where you find galactose in the human body in breast milk galactose is found in breast milk yeah that's why if you look at the name lactose that's to do with milk and then galactose G galactose that's like what galaxy galaxy milk yes breast milk galactose and you find that in CMOS. And check this out. To finish off, antiviral potential of algae polysaccharides. Yeah, they go on to talk about how algae like CMOS, brown and red seaweed, the polysaccharides help with viruses. Look what it says there. Seaweeds have become a major source of new compounds to treat viral diseases. Hint, hint, wink, wink, people. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Do you get that? Viral diseases. And then check this out. A lot of people were talking about the iodine content in um, CMOS. Just do some research. On researchgate.net, which is a scientific website, they say that iodine is by far the best antibiotic, antiviral, and antiseptic of all time. Hmm. Damn. This is some powerful stuff, this conjus crispus stuff. <laughs> Science is simple. It's just that you've been taught it in a confusing way. And there's only one of two reasons why. Either the person teaching you science doesn't understand the subject well enough. Or they do. They just don't want you to understand it. I'm going to let you put two and two together on that one. My name's Leo Marshall. And that concludes the end of my presentation. Thank you. All right. A lot in that. But let's get to some questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get to some questions and then make this available so people can watch it and understand the truth behind Conscious Christmas. Oh, this thing's acting slow. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, just a quick one. I just wanted to know, um, with the CMOS, can you mix different CMOSs? Obviously, because they do hold similar benefits, but they I'm sure they hold um, separate benefits for separate areas as well. As I'm a person who has multiple chronic illnesses, um, one overlapping the other. So I'm wondering if there was like a, multi, like a multivitamin version of a CMOS, basically. 
And I know I have mixed different ones. The brother Liam was talking earlier about the fact that Quandus Crispus, and as he just very articulately explained, is for more for building, and then you've got the other types that are more for cleansing. Um, but you would, a lot of people mix the CMOS gel with lots of other ingredients as well. I'm sure Brother Charles mixes some moringa powder into his um, CMOSs as well, which has its own profile of nutrients. Um, so if you're self-prescribing as far as the CMOS is concerned, you can use the different mosses for different you know because i've even tried to be putting on weight for a very long time as well so it's not just my illnesses it's also just trying to maintain weight the only time i was able to maintain weight was when i was carrying my three children you know? and since that I, it's like I can't hold it so i'm just wondering if a multiple of sea mosses can help with the chronic illnesses as well as the keep it maintaining weight as well as my diet as well because i know that is very important yeah, it says you, you probably, as far as gaining weight and holding weight, that also has a lot to do with your physical fitness and your exercise. And Leon's an expert in that as well, because if you're not exercising, that can deteriorate your muscle mass and then it feels like you're never putting on weight. So you probably do want to book a one-to-one -one consultation with a nutritionist. I offer consultations. I know Econ offers consultations as well um, in order to get a more holistic uh, plan for yourself. Yeah, I'm tired of the GPs, to be fair. Yeah, man, I feel you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, darling. Okay, Mary Nawuku, Nawuka, you can speak now, sis. Nakua. Nakua. Uh, thanks. Um, I wanted to... <laughs> it's phonetic, thanks. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, so I do a bit, a quite a bit of intermittent fasting, so I wanted to know, will um, the CMOS break my fast at all? Because that's something I still do it regardless. And whether if I put it into things like black coffee and apple cider, mix of apple cider vinegar, whether that has any effects on the CMOS. So with intermittent fasting, the from a nutritionist point of view, when I speak about intermittent fasting, I'm mainly talking about solid food. So a lot of people will have a lot of drinks during their 16 hour fasting window and the, the, the eating window is yeah. more concerned about the solid mass that you're eating. So, the, you know, the cellulose fiber you're chewing down with your teeth as opposed to things like, because a lot of people, not in, I wouldn't recommend this, but a lot of people will have like their coffee and their, you know, caffeinated teas and they'll have all of those things in their fasting window. So it depends on how you're using your CMOS gel. If you're just mixing it into water, um, then that, it wouldn't necessarily interfere because it's the intermittent fasting is more to do with your digestive system breaking down the energy your digestive system uses to break down the solid matter of your food smoothie yeah. pieces teas those kind of things it's not draining your it's not working your digestive system in the same way so a lot of people include smoothies um, and juices in that 16 hour fasting window so it doesn't necessarily interfere you're still getting nutrients from it but it won't break your your fasting window. It won't trigger no. It won't trigger. It doesn't trigger insulin then. No, it doesn't. It, not no, no, not in the same way that. Um, it depends how you're having it. If you're having it off the spoon, then it's very unlikely to because the carb level is very low in it. No black. It would be black coffee. So I put a, a spoon in black coffee, or I put a spoon in apple cider vinegar and lemon, and then I sip water. That would be it. Coffee, um, apple cider vinegar, and water throughout the day until I break my fast. That's it. But I was all, I always just concerned whether it breaks the fast or not. But because it's good for you, I still do it anyway. So I just wanted, since I had the platform to ask, that's why I wanted to ask. Coffee necessarily if you're intermittent fasting. Obviously, it's entirely up to you, but it's not. It's not the best thing in the world to. Um, because it's hyping up your adrenal system while you're not taking in the fats to balance it all out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, just before we go on to any other questions. Adding co coconut oil to it might be better. But yes, yeah, since we're going to move on, I hope that's answered your question, love. All right, just before we go on to any other questions, I just want to tell people what we got coming up because I can see people leaving now, so I don't want to miss anyone. So I'm just going to tell people what we got coming up and then people can ask their questions after this. And if you want to go, you can go, because I know it's getting a bit late. All right. So please follow the Hidden Science Academy on our social medias at the Hidden Science Academy or on Facebook or on Vimeo. My sister's posting in links to Telegram, our Telegram channel. I know people are jumping off of WhatsApp, but our sister will post the links to WhatsApp as well. If you're still on WhatsApp, you want to make sure you're following us on these channels so you know when we post the replay so you can take in all of this information pause, rewind, do all that sort of stuff and share with your friends and family, of course. So if you want to follow us 
at the Hidden Science Academy on Instagram. If you want to follow me, it's at the Scientist Online. That's at the Scientist Online. If you want to follow me on Instagram, if you're following us, then you'll always be notified of when we're doing webinars, events, and lectures and that sort of stuff. And here's what we got coming up. So the Hidden Science of Black Holistic Health. That is a monthly lecture series, which is free. You guys can do the Q and A the same way we've done today, where it's Q and A. You lot can ask your questions get all your questions answered with regards to high blood pressure, cholesterol, all that sort of stuff. We've got a black doctor by the name of Dr. Mark Walcott. He's going to be on um, this one next time. So it's the, the 16th of each month we're running this one. This was today. Um, considering the amount of questions we got, we might have to do a part two to this one because there's so many questions, so many people want uh, their questions answered. Black solutions. This is for people who want to know what their rights are. If you've got young children, teenagers, or people in their 20s, they want to know their rights with regards to um, stop and search. Or if you want to know your rights with regards to, you know, certain things coming up, you know, how you can refuse certain things that the government's going to be enforcing on us. Hint, hint, wink, wink. You're going to have black doctors and black lawyers, should I say, on this panel, and you can ask them any questions you like. Any questions you like with regards to common law and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Very important event. That's on the 30th of January. My sister's going to post the link where you guys can sign up for this, the link tree link, and you can sign up for all of these events. Secret Science of Sickle Cell, I mentioned this at the beginning. Make sure that even if you don't suffer from Sickle Cell, make sure you share this with your friends and family because chances are you know someone or they know someone who suffers from Sickle Cell. This event is going to benefit them. Saturday, the 6th of February, on Zoom, you got to register for it. My sister's going to post the link, the link tree link. You click on that link and you just make sure you register for these events and make sure you're sharing the links as well with your friends and family because I, I trust me, this event is going to be beneficial. A lot of us are confused when it comes to sickle cell. So let's get some clarity on that one. And then every year, every February, we do an event called the Hidden Science of Black Love very powerful event obviously we've been doing it as a physical event but this year it's going to be online that's later on in february uh february the 20th or later on but we'll make sure you guys are aware uh saying that the whatsapp is full okay there is another whatsapp but for now just follow us on telegram we'll share the, the whatsapp link on either telegram or uh we'll share it on instagram so you guys can add yourself to a different whatsapp because we've got like <laughs> we've got like 10 whatsapp groups <laughs> that are nearly all of them are full right now so the hidden sites of black love that's next month but i said this at the beginning but a lot of people didn't see this we've got something very very special for you next month and yeah we're going to be putting the spotlight on slow jams we're going to be doing an event called the hidden science of slow jams trust me you do not want to miss that event. So that's all happening next month. But again, you're on the link tree link. You can make sure you sign up to all of these and you won't miss a thing. All right. That was just my little spiel, just because I can see people leaving. Now we can go through however many questions there are. Bev McIntosh, did you want to speak to us? Okay, so if we move on to um, Rakua Smith. You can speak now, sis. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, Beth McIntosh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. So my question is, my son has scleroderma, which is excess collagen, and it makes the skin hard. So earlier you said that um, CMOS contains collagen, which I wasn't aware of, but does that mean that I shouldn't be getting him to use CMOS with his excess collagen, which creates hard skin with his scleroderma? Have you have you tried CMOS? Sorry? Have you tried CMOS? Yeah, he has. And but, you, okay, so how long has he been on it? Not for very long. Have you noticed anything's gotten any worse since he's been on it? No. Okay. Um, no. So, well, what I would recommend is you might want to just try him on it for a few days. If you notice an improvement, because the thing is, it's not just collagen that's in it. And again, those types of conditions could be due to deficiencies and other things, blockages, um, excess toxins in the body. So the other nutrients that are found in the CMOS could be rectifying the root cause of the condition. So the, because when it comes to pharmaceutical um, uh, diagnosis, they kind of give you the top level. It's just 
was just that. But we know health and health challenges are multidimensional. So something else in the CMOS could be addressing the other causes of the condition. So if he's not getting any worse, um, yeah. then he should he will benefit from all the other nutrients. If you do notice he's getting worse, then you might want to dial it back. But like Ocon said and a lot of the rest of us, his looking at his diet as well as the CMOS, addition of the CMOS, it's going to be beneficial so you get that more rounded um, uh, viewpoint. Okay. Also, sis, now that you know there's a difference in the, the different types of CMOS, you now know that the Gracilaria one is better for detoxing. So anytime you've got an excess of anything now, go for the Gracilaria one over the Conjus Crispus because the Conjus Crispus is building up the body. The Gracilaria one will get rid of stuff out of the body. So if he's got an excess of something, Go for the Gracilaria one. Right. Okay. I understand that. That, that will okay. balance it out. All right. Also, I was saying what she could also do is, as well as trying to feed the skin from the inside with the seam, or she could apply something like Moringa oil to the skin, which is yep. food for the skin from the outside. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can find a high, very high quality Moringa oil on Ankara.com. So, again, attacking from the outside and the inside. Normally, um, a lot of people have reported getting a good remedy um, you, going from the inside and the outside. Yes, indeed. All right, last two, and then we're out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Karen, sis, you can talk now. Who was that? Hi, can you hear me? Am I being heard? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I had a question about the purple sea moss and how to prepare it because it's not as gelatinous as the the gold one. So I'm 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 confused on how I should prepare it. Um, I think they're exactly the same as the gold one, sis. If you even though that. it doesn't get as even though it doesn't get as uh, jelly like. Yeah, my one my one tends to get just. Is exactly the same because my purple and my gold are the same genus. They're the same actual type of sea moss. They're just different. Wild ones, ocean farmed ones, wild crafted. But you can, like Econ was saying earlier, you can also just adjust the amount of water that you're using to prepare it. So if you're finding yours is more, you can use less water in the preparation. All right, next one. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move on to Sharon Livingstone. You could talk now, sis. Sean Livingston, you there, sis? Going once. All right, everyone. If you can put everyone on mute for me, sis. Yes, put, yeah. the, put everyone on oh, mute. Sorry. Right. Yes. Can you mute me, please? Thank you. Thank you, sis. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Just before everyone goes, um, if you go to the hiddenscienceacademy.com, for the people who really want to understand this, the body from a black perspective, we've got our, our black holistic health course is not actually online. It's an e-learning course. You go to the hiddenscienceacademy.com and you can start learning about your health from a black perspective. So everything that I talked about today with regards to protein and what protein really is and what black people need for holistic health. Yeah, that's on our website. Now, our website has a membership where you can sign up and become a free member and get access, access to some of our previous videos, previous lectures, previous webinars, access to tickets for um, future events and notification about future events. Or you can sign up to our VIP membership. Now, check this out. It's only $9.97 a month and you get access to all of the replays of previous webinars you get access to all of our lectures we've done the hidden science of black women's health the hidden science of black love the hidden science of colorism all of our previous events um previous lectures on black holistic health previous lectures on nutrition you get all of that for 997 a month plus you get the black holistic health course plus you get any future course we do so we've done courses on meal prep we've done courses on pain relief You'll get all of those courses as well for $9.97 a month. And big up the people who went for the year. I know a lot of people luck from the last webinar, they just pay for the year. That's when you know you're serious, when you start to put value on your health. So if you really want to start learning about your health from a black perspective, I remember one of the callers was like, I'm sick and tired of the medication. I'm sick and tired of the doctors. Well, you're going to have to learn about your health from a black perspective. And this is the only e-learning course in the world right now, the Black Holistic Health course. 
and it's only 9.97 a month and you get access to all of it yeah so go to the insightsacademy.com and you can sign up and you'll get access to all of my previous courses and all that good stuff mm -hmm. all right